Stephen King's. Oh, his uh, ghostwriter name, yeah. Ghostwriter name. Uh, yeah, Richard. Pen name. Richard. Yeah. <laughs> I would love it if Richard Bachman was actually or uh, Bach, Bachman of Bachman <laughs> Turner Overdrive was actually Stephen King. <laughs> was really of, Stephen King? Yeah, Moonlighting is a third yeah. of a band. But 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 baby, you just ain't seen nothing yet. <laughs> I have uh, I have covers. I have a cover by Stephen King that absolutely is wretched. Oh, he's his voice is bad no matter what he does with it. Exactly, and imagine him singing. Oh, oh my, my God. gosh, yeah, that's bad. I had the misfortune of. Uh, I mean, I love the Dark Tower series, but the sure. third book I listened to on audio, and it was him doing it himself. With him reading it, yeah, it was horrendous. Remind me to tell you a story about that sometime because there's a great story about that. All right. I would like to ask that story, but it was really bad. I made it through, but woo. Yeah. He's on. And so Rowland left the town and then <laughs> it's just not great. Um, all right. I think it's time. Yes. Time is now. Time. 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 Uh, volume's good. Let's see. Yeah, got that. Okay, we got that. Um, let's see. All right, I think we're ready. Here we go. It begins okay. in three, two, one. Well, this may sting a little. Hope your insurance is paid up. It's time to shove a jalapeno up this ship's tailpipe. <laughs> This is the morning stream. Shut up, baby. I know it. Hello, everyone. Welcome back to TMS. It's the morning stream for July 31st, 2019, the last day of the month. Yeah, that's right. August is tickling your butt cheeks and ready to enter in. <laughs> oh, jeez. Didn't mean to say it that way. Just came out that way. <laughs> My wife's convinced the older I'm, I get, the more I'm going to yeah. do that. And it's going to be embarrassing because it'll be like in at dinners and in public places and yeah. certainly on microphones. And I'll say things I don't mean to say. And it's just going to be. I you feel know, at those... some point, like basically, we just kind of. It, it's, like it's like a little thermometer bar that just keeps kind of rising. And at some point, the E tag, the explicit tag, is just going to kind of drop on us. Mm -hmm. And we're just going to say, okay, well, let's. Just let's, let it. Uh, just, may as well just go all in then. Let's just f bomb it up. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. Why hold back anymore? We'll change the name to Morning Attack. I, uh, it'll be the name perfect, of the show. Perfect. I'm sure those guys won't care. They'll be fine. They won't care. No. They would care. Nobody cares. Nobody hey, cares. Uh, care. we're uh, we weren't here yesterday uh, for reasons. Brian was traveling. I was at a, uh, had a doctor's appointment in the morning. Uh, everyone keeps asking how that went. It went fine. It was fine. It was just a little follow up. We're doing a we're doing like a little uh, three month. Uh, uh, experiment here with the tea and uh, mm -hmm. this was just a follow up to that I got another two weeks and then they do a new blood tests and then they say whether anything has changed or not and then you know we'll see how it goes oh, uh, good. yeah but I got shot yesterday it was great it was right there in the butt just and uh, <laughs> filled me full of... And, and Kim still did that, right? You didn't have the doctor do that? No, yeah, Kim still did it. She did it early, mm -hmm. early, early in the morning. They told us to do it first mm -hmm. and uh, it was... Uh, was uh, you know like it always is a little little prick at first a little uh, little bit of a and then nothing. That's that. Okay, that's it. Just put the explicit tag on. <laughs> just just do it. All right. <laughs> Whatever. <laughs> Let's just do it. Let's just embrace it. Uh, okay. Yeah. I mean, we're only what five we're minutes here. into this. <laughs> May as well just let it all hang out. All right. Uh, hey, let's... Uh, let's. Hey, hey, if you want your own tee shot, make sure to uh, join the TMS Patreon. Yeah. Uh, which level is it? It is the Diamond Shell? No. Which one is it? It is the... I don't uh, remember. I got to find it. Which version? Where? Which level? It's oh, a, I can't remember. It's in There's there a somewhere. Level on, it's in there somewhere. Yeah. yeah. Join... <laughs> and buy the level that comes with tea, and then you'll get your own tea shot. There you go. Tea shot. You want a tea shot? You want your own syringe? We promise it'll be clean, only used a couple of times by other people. <laughs> we got you hooked up. Uh, you had a trip. How was your trip? Everything go okay? It was good. Yeah. You know, it was um, uh, it was a long trip, a long drive. Well, I mean, it was a short, a short visit to Santa Fe. We left Sunday, came back yesterday, so we were there basically for one full day with two travel days on either side of it and it's about a six and a half seven hour drive um from 
uh, Santa Fe to Denver. Mm -hmm. But yesterday we kind of had to add a little bit of an extra uh, step to our trip. Um, every year, uh, as you know, as you know, as you know, as we know, as we know, Brian goes to the Great American Beer Fest. It's the one day a year that that I move away from gin and tonics and vodka, cranberries or whatever else I'm drinking and have nothing but beer just beer after beer after beer <laughs> i love like, how you say uh, the one day you step away from those things it makes it sound like that's all you're doing every day like that's all i drink yeah. exactly yes like yeah. i drink beer like a supreme court <laughs> justice in in uh college this awesome. is what i drink beer like great um uh but uh, uh you've got to hurry you got to be quick to get tickets because they sell out instantly or they have in years past i think they, they're on their way to doing it again this year yeah and um Unfortunately, the time they were going on sale was going to be right in the middle of this drive. So bad connection uh, out there. Can you not not get good phone service or whatever? Um, well, it's a complicated system because you've got to enter in a, a code, and then you've got they don't have a way. The AXS uh, website access um, ticketing thing doesn't allow you to have your credit card information pre-entered. Oh, so, geez. so yeah, I could potentially do it while Tina drives, be in the passenger seat, flipping back and forth, trying to enter the code, then flipping back and forth and entering other things. We decided that we'd figure out whereabouts we'd be on the trip and then go to the nearest, go to the Starbucks in the city before where we would be mm -hmm. and just wait there for the time to tick over by the, um, by the tickets. Mm. Um, early in the morning right so so we weren't going to be too far out of santa fe and and pretty much the first city you come to or the first town you come to out of santa fe is las vegas not the good las vegas mm -hmm. the <laughs> although one, yeah although I, compared right now it's the grasshopper free las vegas las vegas new mexico which is about an hour outside of santa fe uh so we we you know did a little research oh no there's no starbucks there there's no wi-fi so we're gonna have to find like a public library or something like that. We find one, a library, really, like a, a, a library. Li uh, awesome, like a, like a like a place with books. They still have them, Scott. It's Weird. crazy. Weird. Yes. Okay. Um, and it is it is a Carnegie Library, uh, Andrew Carnegie funded library, and as a matter of fact, it was one of the location shoots from the film Red Dawn from 1984, which was filmed all over Las Vegas, New Mexico. Wow, that's crazy. I didn't. I forgot we talked about that on that show too. We did, and yep. I have a couple photos I need to send you because I, I went to the uh, communist headquarters. <laughs> took, no way! Took photos of that place while I was there as well. He was like, oh, we've got to go. While we're in town, I've got to go take pictures of the of the communist headquarters. Did you Did you yell Wolverines? Uh, I did, yes. Oh. Tina thought it was funny. I did it from within the car, though. I didn't do it like while I was standing outside one of these structures. Because Wolverines! I figured, oh, man. Just like that. Yeah. I figure they've got, they hear that constantly right day after day after day it's wow. like uh john kuzak having people yell i want my two dollars every time <laughs> they see him but uh so we got there at, at about uh, 30 minutes till walked in this library and found the they have the uh the wi-fi code printed on a piece of paper stuck to the front door um had about half an hour till tickets went on sale and so you know like, oh let's use let's, let's take advantage of this nice clean non uh, gas station bathroom and use that really quick heck yeah that's a great and idea all over the library bathroom are signs that say please close the door when using the bathroom please flush the toilet after using the bathroom hold the handle down uh, when you when flushing the toilet like i'm thinking about and it's all like eight and a half by 11 paper with big bold helvetica printed in the middle of it like, why oh. what the <laughs> heck why did it what who, who? i'm guessing that all of these stemmed from one problem like one issue somebody somebody left a ginormous dookie in the toilet didn't flush it and left the door open or something so that the stench went all the way out into the rest of the library that's bonkers to me that they would have to it be is that absolutely bonkers. specific about uh, knowing how to put the handle down and that you're supposed to flush like they, they must it's get a, some weird uh, foot traffic in that library right. in las vegas New like, Mexico. Guess, yeah like somebody somebody pushes the little handle down and and their poop doesn't flush and they're like well i guess that's that i guess it's there forever now and <laughs> it was wash their hands wow. but uh things went well uh got the tickets ordered and we got back in the car we stopped like i said over at the the uh the um <laughs> the communist headquarters. I'm not going to say what I almost said because there would be a 
significant portion of our political population that would disapprove but yeah yeah um uh, and took a picture from outside there i went inside to see if maybe they had some sort of like commemorative plaque saying um on this date in 1983 patrick swayze filmed this scene with uh c thomas howell or, or something like that nothing yeah. nothing? nothing in there no they're, boy, they're tired of it they're sick of it they want to erase the memory of it they don't want to do it. i with guess it. so yeah, yeah it's just a bummer that's crazy but uh we, we hightailed it out of town and made it the rest of the way home. Nice. Did you know yeah. the way to Santa Fe? Ah, it's really easy. <laughs> yeah. You just go straight, straight down I twenty five for us, but yes. La 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 la. That's how la. we do. Uh, that's how we do Vegas. You'd, you'd be dumb if you missed yeah. it. You just drive straight. Yes, and you get exactly. There. It's one. It's one highway, and yeah. if you uh, if you can't find your way from Denver to Santa Fe, then you're going north. Anyone in the chat live in Vegas? Can you give us an update on the? Uh, bug situation toppers yeah is it still it's apparently still going on and scott for the most part the news stories are very positive <laughs> about them being gone yeah however one uh one news article and it's really just one guy who posted a video so i i don't know how much i trust this guy mm. experts say the grasshopper invasion could last for weeks oh man <laughs> really yeah. Still yeah. a lot in some areas, says Ash Amish Overlord. Wait, there's an Amish guy in uh, Vegas? That's awesome. Uh, well, that's that's a sign of the end times, if there ever was one. There really is. really is. And uh, listen, for the most part, my trip, we're going to be inside, right? We're going to be going to nice restaurants and checking out a show and doing this and doing that, and it's all going to be inside. Except for one day. Mm-hmm. Where we've rented a cabana at one of the pools at our hotel. <laughs> That's right. I forgot you have an outdoor yes. moment happening. Well, maybe maybe it'll moment, be fine like though, because the... that's during the day. They don't. There's no lights to be attracted to, or you you might be okay. You you'll be okay. Oh, so you think that like they're sleeping? No, the day? they're, they're I mean, around, but they're I don't... just not concentrated over the giant pyramid. <laughs> that's... <laughs> beaming a hole in the moon i mean they're you know they're... that is that is the difference like oh they'll be more spread out therefore you should have to deal with them less than if no oh, that's right okay yeah some of them, like during the day they go and hang out at slots of fun some mm. of them go you know uh go to <laughs> they're all they're basically like tourists right they just scatter during the day and go do touristy things then at night they're like hopping at the, the nightclubs yep and... yep i mean you're but your hands concentrate on the strip your chances of ingesting one uh, is 98%. You're going to swallow a grasshopper on this trip. That's oh, how that's going to go. Yep. Just going to gulp that really? thing right then. Yes, you're going to get one down there. His spindly, sharp legs are going to be all in your throat. You're going to go, oh, oh, oh. Tina's going to go, you okay? You okay? I swallowed a grasshopper, you're going to say, and there's going to be a grasshopper in there. And while he's going down, he's going to get nervous, and he's going to bubble up that weird tobacco grossness that the grasshoppers barf up when they're, yes, when they're scared. Yes, the tar. Yeah, the yeah. stupid tar. So you're going to get yes. that going all up in your throat? Oh, it's going to be bad, dude. Bad. Uh, Actually, I'm just sharing a, a hor horrible idea of what your yeah, life USA to, By the way, USA Today is also another one that says... Uh, how long will they be here? A couple of weeks at the most, Knight said. They're moving through. They come in, settle in, and then at night they take off and fly, and they can fly fair distances. So basically, the reason they haven't left yet is because they can really only jump and extend their jump by 30 feet, I think is, is basically... Uh, they don't oh. really fly as much as they they jump and uh, and flap for, for 30 feet. Uh, are and they... they uh, and they... Uh, do we know the life expectancy of this particular breed of uh, grasshopper? Is? Oh, maybe that's a really just... good idea. A really good question. I don't know. Maybe you'll just have a genocide happen and they're just all dead, which is kind of gross too, but, you know, yeah. the city can yeah, deal with that. Exactly. I don't know. This is, um, this is I awful. Don't know, but I, don't, I do like the USA Today. Like, it's basically your questions about the uh, the grasshopper invasion. Are they dangerous? How long will they be here? And then the last, oh, can the state do anything to control the population? But then the last question is, but what if a grasshopper flies inside my car? Mm. <laughs> and the answer is, stay calm, don't panic, and remember, these bugs are harmless. <laughs> but what if it jumps on my face? I know, exactly. Like, okay, how about if it lands in my food? <laughs> what do I do if one lands on my TV set and I can't see Jeopardy? <laughs> <laughs> Oh, uh, the you problems know what? that come here's how I'm, here's, All right, here's what I'm going to do from this point on. Right. I'm going to say, if if they're still around, yeah. 
when I go on my trip in, in a week and a half, uh, it'll be the most memorable birthday I've ever had. Oh, yeah. <laughs> no, this is the positive spin. Exactly. Yeah. There'll be some bugs. It's okay. It'll be memorable. Yeah. You'll say I was there. Listen, the year. I mean, what's one of the first things? One of the, one of the first things we think of when we think of that first spectacular up at Snowbird, right? Yeah. It was moth moth apocalypse. Moth apocalypse. I'm guessing that though that will seem like a mild blip compared to how many grasshoppers I'm seeing on these videos. Because <laughs> there weren't very many moths. Like you'd walk down the hall and go, "Oh, there's one of those moths everybody's talking about." Yeah. And this thing, it's yeah. like. Oh, it's the opposite. Oh, there's a space where there aren't grasshoppers. Right, there's a there's an entire square foot of space that does not contain a grasshopper. Yeah, it'll be something else. Uh, well, anyway, I hope I hope they clear out and it's not a bummer because that would suck uh, for your birthday trip. But I will say this: uh, mm -hmm. the my brother Matt, when he was first adopted, my Korean brother Matt, uh, we had adopted him when he was nine. When he was about eleven or twelve. Uh, during the late summer, he would go outside and he would capture grasshoppers, the bigger the better, mm -hmm. and he would take them in the house and he would put them in a little bag, uh, plastic, uh, like a little baggie. He'd put them in the microwave. He would cook that grasshopper, which would jump, jump around like crazy because it was being cooked to death, and then he'd eat it because... In the part of Korea he was living in and in the uh, orphanage he was in, they ate a lot of grasshoppers and locusts and stuff. So it's all I can do to not want to call my brother and go, Matt, <laughs> it's karma. how bad do you want to go to Vegas right now? <laughs> right, yeah, no kidding. Maybe he oh could solve God. the whole problem. He'd just go there and go, I worry not, denizens of Vegas. I've got this. <laughs> I've got this. Give me, give me, give me 25 microwaves. Yep. <laughs> He <laughs> just play that song from Pulp Fiction, and he'll run out and take everything. Bring out the gib. <laughs> so, oh, speaking of Pulp Fiction, so uh, I had a weird dream. I just wanted to uh, see if you could uh, decipher it. You ready? Yes. Okay. It, it it's just it doesn't have anything to do with Pulp Fiction, other than that John Travolta is in my dream for some reason. John Travolta is in my dream, and mm -hmm. in the dream, my job, which seemed very stressful in the dream, this was last night was to keep his chin hole clean. So he <laughs> constantly had stuff in his chin hole, and I uh -huh. had to be digging it out with like a butter knife or whatever it was in the dream. I don't remember. And it felt like some... I was in this dream for years. Like, Make sure you get those nacho chip crumbs out of there. <laughs> I get to touch my chin. I work really hard on my chin. <laughs> oh, my gosh. <clears throat> I don't remember him having a voice in the dream, but that, oh, really? that would have oh, been it. That would have been it. Yeah, it would have been it would have been 70s. It would have been Saturday Night Fever, John Travolta, not um Oh, it can't be now. Tell me the password. <laughs> Current John Travolta. Weird nasal. <laughs> tell me the password. Tell me the pa I'm doing a swordfish, John Travolta. Oh, swordfish. Tell me the pa <laughs> Exactly. But anyway, he he has, you know, he's got that hole. Or what do they call it? A cleft. Yeah. A cleft. And yes. uh, it just was always got stuff in it. And they were like, Johnson, get in here and get to work. He's got, there's stuff in his chin. And I were, to... you, were you micro sized or uh, were you full sized Scott Johnson? Uh, was full sized. And his okay. chin seemed bigger than it should be, but it was still like a, I don't know. It probably looked this big, but it was probably really just wow. a normal size. It just, I had to get up close and just like crank on it and big chunks of like, it felt like. What, what, yeah, tools. Yeah, like like, a, like it felt like uh, just like a knife, but I would grind into this hole and it would come and big pieces of like, um, uh, uh, pl like plaster uh, wall oh, material just like, crumbling out like of there. Like chin smeg, yeah, basically. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Just huge chunks of something was stuck in his chin hole, and it was perpetual, and I was always doing it. It was a weird dream, dude. I don't know what was, was going uh, on. At some point during your job, would you work your way up to Emily Blunt? <laughs> she doesn't have a. She have a cleft, or she just has a. She did. I think she had it filled. Oh, but it wasn't. It was never like his, where you could put a park a truck in there. Like it was always just like a little no, divot. No, hers hers wasn't not nearly as bad. You know who's got um oh, who's it's the uh, the woman who plays uh White Canary or or basically she's um uh oh my god, can't remember the the character name. She's on Legends of Tomorrow. She started out on Arrow as the sister of 
Oliver Queen's uh, love interest. Oh, somebody in the chat room knows her name. I don't know Sarah her name. Lance. Sarah yes. Lance. Yeah, she's cool. I like her. She's really cool, and she, yeah. you know, she could kick the crap out of. <laughs> oh yeah. Katie Lots uh, is the actress. K a y t. I'm sorry. K a i t y Lots. And if you look at her chin, she's got like extra extra cleft on her chin. The uh, I usually associate that cleft idea with dudes, but you're right. She has a little bit of a little bit little of one divot, there. Little divot. Yeah. But the although one... again, there's some photos look like recent photos of her where she doesn't have it. I wonder if. Uh... I mean, is that a thing they want to get fixed? Like, I don't think I Emily think Blunt so. should ever fix anything because I think Emily Blunt no. is just gorgeous and never needs. I to and anything. I and I would one hundred percent agree with you because uh, if you know, all right. So I have a thing about chins, whatever, but. I think it's a it's a dumb thing just to get plastic surgery on something because you don't feel good about it. So what if somebody's not attracted to you? No big deal, right? Yeah, no big Lots deal. Lots of people are. Yeah. So. Who, who's the uh, 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 Kirk Douglas? It goes right. for miles, that thing. It's a huge cleft. Well, yeah, Rainbow Bright now. asks, I only have that chin thing with women, correct? Totally correct. Yeah, like uh, Kirk Douglas, whatever. Uh, I don't know what it is. And it's not a, it's not a thing that kind of grosses me out or just you know oh i hate people with cleft chins or women with cleft chins you just it's see just it and a, you just notice it or? it's a thing that i cannot look away from hmm. interesting so it kind of distracts yeah. you while you're trying to just kind of distracts me like yeah. i can't look away like uh yeah and reese witherspoon has it too she doesn't have the cleft but she's got the pointy chin oh yeah the can't pointy look away chin. from it yeah yeah she's yeah. got that i was talking to, <clears throat> my wife has kind of a pointy chin <clears throat> But it's not quite the same, so I don't know if it would have the same distraction qualities. But uh, anyway, yeah. I'm looking up cleft chins here. No, not and, at all. And and uh, and I find your wife to be lovely, and I and I don't uh, don't notice her chins. So apparently, it's not on my her chin's not on my <laughs> your chin on my radar or whatever. Dice to says, "What about Stifler's mom, Jennifer? Uh, Jennifer, what is her name? Not Hudson, not Garner, not Lawrence, not Lawrence. Uh, Jennifer uh, Lopez, uh, Jennifer." Aniston, Jennifer, uh, uh, Jennifer's I'm body. To Coolidge, Jennifer oh. Coolidge. <laughs> okay. Uh, what about her chin? I'm looking at Jennifer Coolidge right now, and I don't see. No, her chin's fine. It's got a big She's hair a on it. Woman. Maybe it's got a hair on it. No. <laughs> well, you get know. up close. We've all got hair everywhere. Everyone's got a hair somewhere. Well, you just got to get close, close enough. Oh, is it because she played? Uh, wasn't she in that Legally Blonde with um, Reese? She play her mom or something? Uh, Reese Witherbone, what's her name? Or Witherspoon? Witherspoon. Witherbone. I know the two of them were in uh, um, Legally Blonde, but I don't know if she plays her mom or something. But uh, Aaron Eckhart's almost got a full butt for a chin. Oh, yeah. See, Aaron Eckhart, big example. Of He's got a like it's, it looks like clefty, a bum. If you cropped out chin. that chin, if it's just off to an angle, you crop it out. He's got a bum down there. It looks like you're sharing his a picture chin, of a bum. His chin is pretty much two faced. Yeah, it's, it is. <laughs> Where's Harvey Dent? Someone yelled at him, and he said, "I'm over here with my bum chin." Yes. Anyway, uh, chat room. If you or anyone at home have any theory as to why I had a dream about Travolta's chin hole and had to dig stuff out of it, let me know what that you think that you, means. Yeah. Have you watched a John Travolta movie recently? Or I did, uh, but I, I it was a it was a huge ensemble movie with tons of people in it, so I don't mm, know why. Okay. I zeroed in on that or why that ended up being the focus. Like, it just makes zero sense to me why that happened. But hmm. I am happily, uh, I'm happily taking it like a man. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and, uh, I'll just deal with it, I guess. All right. Exactly. Uh, we do a thing on Wednesdays, which involves Brian Dunaway. And, we do uh, indeed. We like having him on. We're going to play a little game. We're going to give away some prizes. Today's a really good one. And, uh, See if we can get him on the horn here. Uh, Dunaway, is that you on the horn? Oh, not yet. It's ringing. It's ringing. We're ringing. We're walking. We're walking. Now we're moving. Okay, he's still. <laughs> Brian's queuing up the. Uh, <laughs> queuing up the. I'm going to try it on the iPad again. There we go. All right. Oh, did it work for you? The, nice. Yeah, actually using the iPad and the, the pencil. So not printing out the. <clears throat> the topic and scratching things off i'm going to use i'm going to use this and you guys pa babble royale went paperless this week went paperless mm, nice job oh my gosh you all right no it's like mm, oh god what? that scared oh. me i don't know why i thought that was it's like right now going paperless too yeah no kidding hey 
Hey, Brian Dunaway. Welcome to the show. How are you? Oh, hi. This is Brian. How are you? Oh, so good. Hi, Brian. So good. Are you, uh, uh, you're at work, right? Working? Working for the man. I'm, at, I'm doing my thing. I'm doing my thing that I do on the daily. Yeah, that's good. Paying the oh, bills. Really? Keep, keeping everyone at yeah, bay. Yeah, that's sure. right. Sure. I'm doing my daily routine. I'll bet Brian is a very fun guy to work with. He's a good co-worker. I'll oh, bet you. totally. Yeah. And I bet he's oh. like, you know, not just a fun guy, but I bet he's also like a reliable guy. Like, I bet when somebody says, hey, can you go take care of this, you know, thing for me today? I bet you take care of it. And you don't say, oh, you know, boss, sorry, I never got to. Yeah. It. And even if that's you screw something. That's some... actually my work ethic. That's exactly yeah, what I that think. That sounds right. I and totally if, you, if yeah. you screw it up, I'll bet you're the first to admit it and make up for it. And no one can be mad at you is what I'm saying. It's impossible. It's I'll bet it's only. I bet it's only here during you know Babel Royale some days that uh, that you say, right. oh sorry, no, I can't get to it. I just never. I'm got sorry, it. sorry, I can't help sorry. you right now. Actually, it's it's usually, I, usually I'm isolated and I'm taking my break. I get two 15 minute breaks. I take usually it takes about 15 minutes for here. Yeah, mm -hmm. and that's what I do. And lots of times it falls during my lunch hour. So. Well, this works yeah. out nicely then. Look at us I'm ruining your day. I'm off clock. That's fantastic. Nice. Uh, also off the clock is our listener who has called in to our number and will participate today. Hi, who's this? Hey, it's Barry Ricks from West Valley City, Utah. Well, hello, Barry Ricks. Wow, you are a... Oh, let's cancel that. Uh, you are a very echo echoey person today. But yeah, that's... you sound like you're in a stadium. Yeah, it's yeah, awesome. Do you, work in a, do you work in an oil barrel? <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm in a stairwell right now. Oh, all right. That's oh, what it sounds that's like. Smart. Yeah, no, that's, that's, smart. A, that's a good idea. We'll take you any way we can get you. Uh, Barry, old friend of the program, and uh, good to have you on here. We're going to play this game. Brian's going to explain it and tell you what you could win. That's, that's right, right, Scott. Oh, wrong one. I was really hoping to have the echo. Hold on. Oh, are you in the, I was gonna you try in the stairwell the with me? I was going to try and be in the same echoey stairwell as, uh, as Barry. <laughs> nice. I forgot I had the reverb button queued up. Uh, Barry, I'm going to give Scott and Brian Dunaway a topic. Right. Those two are going to go back and forth with answers for that topic. If one of them gives a wrong answer, they repeat somebody else's answer or their own answer, or they take too long to come up with their own answer. Well, the win is going to go to the other player. Your job is to predict who is going to come out on top based on today's topic. Today, you are playing for a prize from, courtesy of uh, Johan Karlstrom, uh, donated this a Wolfenstein Youngblood launcher key. Ooh. So a copy of Wolfenstein Youngblood, first person shooter, takes place in uh, in in uh, Germany, France, uh, actually. In this case, Hitler. Oh, this one's in. This one's in. Yeah, the, this is brand yeah. news. Like this is this is yeah. why this is oh, a big deal. A brand new one? This one came out like what three days ago or something, and oh, somebody wow. is already okay, saying, is... "Hey, we got you a hot new fresh code." Uh, wow, so, brand spanking new. Yeah, brand new Rotten game. Fresh out of Germany. Sixty dollar right. value. It's a really good deal. So there you there you have so it. You get to beat Hitler. Uh, first person beat Hitler with a baguette in there, this one. There is, you go. Is what you do. Yep. Nice. Is Hitler a baby in this game? Uh, no. Well, it's I've so, always wanted to play out the scenario. I wouldn't mind. It'd be a fun idea, wouldn't it? <laughs> uh, here's here's the the story on this thing. So I think it's actually set in the eighties. And it right. is uh, Blaskowitz. A couple of sisters. Who is, is yeah, it's his, his daughters uh, are trying to hunt you down or trying to find you and hunt down and kill a bunch of Nazis because in their scenario, the Nazis have won and all right. of uh, France and, and all of Europe have become the Nazi state. And it's up to, a, it's still up to America to solve the problem, basically. Well, so, if Indiana uh, Jones has just taken his shot, this would be a moot point. Yes. So moot. I think Hitler might be dead in the 80s, but I'm not sure. He might still be around. I don't know. But yeah, the baby Hitler <laughs> scenario, that's what that video game should be called. The baby Hitler scenario. The baby Hitler, right. se Hitler scenario. Yeah, yes. I'd watch that. Goo -goo -ga -ga. that. That'd be amazing. Very good. So that is what you are playing for, Barry. Uh, the topic today <laughs> is one that uh, that I came up with. Uh, what, what? I'm what? sorry. I just love how Ibit was like, oh, thank God it's that serious. conversation. So we were so we could get onto the game. Back on track. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, uh, So that's <laughs> what you're playing for. Today's topic is one that I actually came up with as I was working on Coverville for this afternoon. Mm -hmm. um, it is the 35th anniversary of a monumental album oh. by released by Prince and the Revolution to coincide with a film. This album is uh, the third best-selling soundtrack of all time. And I'm not going to tell you the title of the album because I'm sure you know it. We've watched it for Film Sack. Mm. And what? because I want you to tell me the nine songs 
including the title track that can be found on this album. I don't think we've seen that for Film Sack, have we? I would say we, we've talked have about we it, but did we ever watch it? No, I don't, I don't think we ever did. I thought I remember the Prince puppet scene. No. Where he's making the puppet talk Brent for him. No? Puppet. No, I don't think so. Oh, Rainbow Bright says we have not watched yeah. it. Yeah, I just did, I just did so it. So now that we got that straight, I can actually concentrate on the on the question. <laughs> Please concentrate on the question. So there are nine songs on this album. Okay, I want okay. to know how many of them you guys can name. Okay. Okay. Quite simply. Oh, my gosh. How many songs gotcha? That's right. So, Barry, knowing that that is the topic... Uh, who do you want to go first, and who do you think is going to win? Uh, let's. Uh, Scott's going to go first, and Scott's going to win. Oh my lord, Barry! Ooh. Really? Uh, All right, he's going to. He's putting a lot like, of faith and in I, this. And I'm guessing. I mean, <laughs> you want to make Scott give Scott the easiest one, the easiest one to answer. I get it. I totally get it. Um, All right. So. So I assume that <laughs> I could blow this right now. Maybe. <laughs> <laughs> I assume that the album. And Little soundtrack in question is, uh, <laughs> I assume it's getting uh, in your head. Getting it, in your head. It's Purple Rain, and so I'm gonna go with the title track, Purple Rain. That is a very good way to start this, and now we can finally talk about this thing like you know, like it's uh, <laughs> like it's a thing, it's a real thing. Yes, exactly. Okay. All, right. All right. Why can't I? Uh, there we go. Oh, because I tapped on the side of my my <gasps> Apple Pencil, so I was trying to erase things. Okay. There oh, we I, go. Yeah, I turned that off. I hate that feature. I know, I know. I had to. There, there we go. Rain. So I have, I have, uh, I have. No, oh, the answer is under the cherry moon. I'm sorry, that's oh, the. Moon. Oh, you're oh, totally wrong. Right. Oh, shoot. Okay. Correct. So I, ha I have. Yes. I have a five disc changer in my car. That's right. Disc changer. Okay. Shut up. I do like to go back to the disc. <laughs> Shut up. You and do. I'll you give really you, have I'll that. Give you, I'll give you a clue of uh, two yeah. albums by Prince that are in there currently, as well as the other three Smashing Pumpkins. CDs in there. Do you think Purple Rain is in there? I don't know. I no, think it is. I'll bet. Oh, really? It is it's, it's not actually, but I do love that album. I do love it. Mm. Um, so we're going to go with uh, Let's Go Crazy. Mm. Let's Go Crazy. That is the title track, Dearly Beloved. We're gathered here today to get to this thing and called that's Battle how the Royale. Album, yeah. mm. Starts off. Uh, All right. All right. That Nikki song in the, in the uh, Nikki in the mm. hotel lobby doing a thing with a magazine, Nikki. that thing. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I never understood. Well, first off, I need the title. Uh, <laughs> so it's not just that Nikki. Nikki thing. Uh, I think it should be the Nikki thing. I definitely think that's what you should be. Uh, da, da, ta, um, darling. Nikki Diddly Do. Nikki Darling. Nikki Dar Nikki Darling. Nikki Darling. Darling Nikki. Darling Nikki. Darling Nikki. Okay, no. Darling Nikki. No. Yes. Oh, that's too bad. I'm going to give it to you. Um, yes, uh, Darling Nikki. I, I never understood. Was she actually using the mas the, the magazine? Oh. Or was she um, was she just using it as uh, as inspiration? Like, you know, was right. she... Because she said it's with a magazine. And right, I didn't right, know right. if he meant that the oh. magazine was... Uh, in on know, the deal? <laughs> in on the deal. Yeah. Exactly. I don't know. That's a good... That's a great question. This was the reason... Yeah. Uh, that's the song that my mom decided the album wasn't allowed in our house. We I believe really? it. Yeah. yeah, well, it makes really? sense. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. Which, by the way, <laughs> and then I, she heard, and then she heard when doves cry, and she brought it back in. She yeah, brought it back. And in. She was all in. <laughs> like, yeah. She let's was bring this in. back in. This is good. This is good. She just. Uh, oh, Dice Tomato says it was a. Fi it was uh, figurative. It wasn't even like literally. Oh, really? Uh, yeah. I don't know. I don't know how this works. Hmm. Yeah, I just remember that was the big one, and and I have some. Here's some parenting advice for everybody: if you immediately sure. demonize a thing and don't explain why, your kids will go out and find it somewhere else. So what you totally, need, right. what you and need it'll to do, be, and it'll make them uh, much faster at finding it somewhere else. Yep. So what you do is you sit down with them and you listen to Prince's uh, uh, "Purple Rain," and then when you get to that bit, sure it's awkward and weird, but at least you're like, all right, well that was that was a funky little song, wasn't it? I'm not sure I love that, but hey, all right, well whatever, Prince. <laughs> Like, how does that song make you feel, John? Yeah, how uh -huh. do you feel? Yeah. <laughs> I never want to listen to Prince again. <laughs> uh, just, there are other ways, is all I'm saying. All right, Brian. Or, sorry, yeah, Brian's turn. Brian's turn, yep. Yeah, well, I did. I said, when when doves cry. Oh, you did mention that one, oh, yes. Yeah, yeah, that, that was, was my answer. answer. It, was, it was a quick one, just trying to pitch it under Scott's nose. And I liked it. Nice maybe job. Maybe he would miss it. He did miss it. Very good. Yeah. Yes, when Dubs cried the the lead song on side two of the album. 
Uh, the, be- the better, by the way, the better side of the uh, of the album. Just saying. Hmm. I can't. Mm-hmm. I can't. I can't agree with you there. Oh, interesting. So when yeah, you guys we'll say talk side, about that once you, we know all the songs. You mean on? Well, tape. I mean, let's go crazy is so overplayed. Really? But when Dove Cry is also overplayed, but for some reason mm-hmm. it never gets old. Yeah. Uh, well, we'll talk about it more when uh, when we get the full lineup. Just, right. Right. Coverville. Wasn't he in a? T- <laughs> he was like in a tub, fully dressed with a bunch of doves flying around. That was the that was the music video for when Doves mm-hmm. Cry. Yeah. Oh, so beautiful. Yeah. And he comes crawling across the floor, going, oh, well, well, well. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a, uh, I'm a guitar. Bling, 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 bling. I yeah. can't think of anything. Oh, shoot, I don't want to. I don't want to blow Barry's trust in my Barry. Um, hey, Barry. what do you what do you care about, Barry? Barry's standing in a hall somewhere. What do you? Barry. <laughs> Barry. <laughs> Barry. Um, Barry. All right, let's see. Um. I'm just. I had this record. Or I had this tape. Mm-hmm. Oh, and now that you got uh, that tape player, it's too bad you don't still have it. I can't think. Walkman? I'll just make one up or think of a Prince song. Was was Kiss on there? The yeah, the, that's the, right. The Tom Jones ish thing. Totally. <laughs> okay. Well, first off. The version by Tom Jones and the Art of Noise did not make it onto this album because uh, right. that's by Tom Jones and the Art of Noise. Second of all, that's not on this album. No! No! I think, that was, I think that was on Under the Cherry Moon. No, no, that was on Around no. the World in a Day. Was it? It's been on the several. And Barry. I think I'm getting confused with the compilation ones I have. Yeah, yeah. Ah, that annoys me. Okay, tell me the rest. So I- All right, the rest. The other ones you could have chosen. Take Me With You, The mm-hmm. Beautiful Ones. Computer mm-hmm. Blue, which is kind of like, uh, okay, it's funny it. because I wouldn't call it the forgettable song, but it's it was never really released as a single like some of these other ones were. Mm-hmm. But it, uh, but when you think of this musical interlude in the middle of the song Computer Blue, that's the one you totally associate with the movie Purple Rain. Yeah. Um, always, or, or I'm sorry. Also, I would die for you, and baby, I'm a star. <laughs> I wouldn't have known any I'm of those. Uh, by the way, uh, uh, yes. Kiss, I guess, was on. Uh, uh, the Batman soundtrack, according to the chat room. Oh, God. I love that. Oh, it definitely was not on the Batman. It was not, but God, I love that Batman soundtrack with Prince. Oh, my God. It's such a guilty pleasure. I love the crap Which movie that was one. that? Also Batman? Love... Was that the second Batman? Or... Uh, Re- no, it was the first one. No, he, first he, was one? Only in, he was only involved on the... Um, I'm the Bat. With the first Batman, and Bat Dance was like the... Yeah, the Bat Dance. By the it way, was... watch that YouTube video. That's Parade. amazing. Parade was the album that that was released oh, okay. on. okay. All right. Yeah. I had this guilt. I also had this. I also had this love for Alphabet Street. That's such a yeah. Such a song. Yeah, that's song. a great one. I think my favorite so, Prince song is uh, mm-hmm. "Nothing Compares to You," even though he's not famous mm-hmm. for singing it. I really like no. that song. Right. But that's not the you trivia gotta, question. You got to give State O'Connor. She really, she nailed that one. She yeah, but you know what? Sure. I'll, t- I'll take that Chris Cornell cover over hers any day, though. Yeah, that's good too, oh, though. Yeah. That thing eats my soul. It's so good. It is really good. Uh, Barry, how you feeling, bud? I'm I'm Betrayed. totally disappointed in you, Scott. <laughs> Thanks, man. Yeah. I appreciate like it. I wasted, uh, we'll, like we'll I wasted my Don't time worry. in this hallway that smells like pee. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, there'll be another chance for Barry. to win again down the road uh, tomorrow, right. or not tomorrow. Monday, we'll move forward that prize though, and uh, one prizes of you can will have carry it. over, and stuff will get added to it, and then Monday we'll we'll play it again. And Barry, you're invited to try again on Monday if you like. That's right. Uh, thanks again to Johan Karlstrom who sent in that code uh, for Wolfenstein yeah, yeah. Young Blood. Uh, it's a Bethesda yeah, launcher right. key, so you run it through. It's a PC version of the game, I should mention. And uh, that was really nice of him. And we'll add to it and make a bigger prize package on Monday. Mm-hmm. Uh, Brian Dunaway, uh, we just did a we just did a boop show. People should check it out. It was fun. We did it last night uh, or yesterday afternoon, I guess I should say. And it was yeah. rad, and it's up there now at frogpants.com slash boop, and we talked about a bunch of cool stuff, so people should go listen to that. Mm-hmm. Do you think I'm obsessed it, with space greatly. games? Do you think I have a problem? I No, I don't think you have a problem. I think I think you're beautiful just the way you are, Scott. Oh. <laughs> space games and all. That's really sweet of you to say that. It is, and I can't wait. I, I'm, I'm really excited about the Coverthon today. I try to tune in as often as I can. I'm going to make extra effort to be there today. Fantastic. It's a day, right? Uh, what? It's a day. Wednesday? Wait, All right. Today's yeah, Wednesday. Wait, what are you going to try to be there for today? What was it again you said? 
the cover thon, the Prince. Oh, that. Yeah, yeah, prince. yeah. You should be there yeah. for that. That's yeah. you, Prince. You and Prince are like uh, peas in a pod. Two, two uh, weird symbols in a pod. Yeah, that's it. <laughs> that's one p.m. our time. Let's go crazy. That'll be uh, three p.m. your time, Brian. So that's when you're going to want to tune in. Yes. Twitch.tv uh, slash Coverville. That's right. <laughs> in honor of the 35th anniversary of the release of the album. Indeed, indeed. Perfect. Brian and Dunaway, take it easy, have fun, and kiss we'll our butts. Bye. All right. Hey, look what we yeah. got time for. We got time for a little bit of this. This is your radio newscaster with another exclusive sensational summary of world and local events. It's the news brought to you by. My wife is a school teacher in a high uh, high need school in Tampa, Florida. The stories I could tell you from last year. She started a DonorsChoose.org fund to get six Samsung tablets for her classroom for when she pulls small groups that need extra attention. Her school was a turnaround school last year, meaning that they have two years to get the school grade up to passing. While it was challenging year four, they managed to get a C and are aiming to get an A. Please visit tinyurl.com slash turnaround tablets or search donorschoose.org for engaging young readers with tablets to help out there you go awesome thing but also sad that in this country we have to work yeah. around the system to get better stuff for education it drives me crazy totally but good but good for her, uh good for her that uh um that she's taking charge of this and spearheading a, an effort to to get something to help these kids love it agree all right a couple of quickies here uh, breaking news, Taco Festival runs yeah. out of unlimited free tacos. <laughs> oh, no. That's a rough bit of turnaround. Yeah, it's right there in the name, unlimited, but yeah. it turns out limited. Yeah, it turns out to be kind of limited. A festival in the South Bay, uh, this uh, event gro gro uh, goers say promised unlimited beer and tacos fell short of expectations. Uh, seven on your sides, Michael Finney. I guess that's a name seven of the thing. Seven on your side must be the taco shop. I guess yeah. so. Uh, tells us some people left with a bitter taste. Uh, your oh, no, it looks like Seven on Your Side is the ABC7 News oh. uh, report. I hate guy, that name. The person who called in the report, yeah. I hate that name. What <laughs> other Seven on Your Side. What other side would you be on? Like, I don't really understand why you would name <laughs> yourselves that. You're just the news channel. You're not on anyone's side. Seven on side. your opponent's side. <laughs> You're not supposed to be on anyone's side. You're supposed to just do the news. Right, right. Anyway, that annoys me. Yeah. Uh, it said here at the festival, uh, unlimited tacos, unlimited unlimited beer, walking around multiple venues of booths and going and doing lots of tastings. That's what people were doing there. Mm -hmm. uh, it says the wait for one free taco was 90 minutes. They ran out mm -hmm. when she got halfway through the line. Never got a free taco, she says. By the point they started charging 250 for a taco, the news came. Uh, sorry, the news was coming up the line from uh, to us. So they not only ran out of, they don't really run out of tacos, but they started charging for them. Once they got to a certain uh, certain level, they just said, oh, man, I think the only way to, to to kill demand for our free tacos is to make them $2.50 free tacos, unlimited free tacos. Oops. You guys screwed up. Uh, they let VIP ticket holders go in first. Apparently, they scrounged up all the free tacos. Mm, um, VIPs. It says here, Lottos are starting to walk out as soon as they put their signs up that they were no longer giving out the free tacos. We found similar complaints on Yelp and Reddit. Anyway, sorry, Bay uh, Bay people. Bay Area people. So, so uh, if it's a taco and beer festival, mm. wouldn't you expect that there would be more places with tacos and beer? I mean, you would. So uh, why would people leave when this one uh, stand stopped giving out tacos? You'd think that, all right, well, I guess we'll just go over to these other stands that have free tacos if this isn't a festival. <laughs> well, as much as this news organization is on our side, they did not get into those details. Yeah. And I don't know. Yeah, I don't exactly. Know um, look, I think the whole point of these events mm -hmm. should be supporting local businesses and not just getting sure. your damn free taco. So. Part of me is like, yeah, probably shouldn't. Probably should have had more tacos if you're going to claim having free unlimited tacos. But also, mm -hmm. uh, maybe you know, people going. You just you, the whole point is to bring awareness to like various establishments you haven't heard of, support local businesses. Sure. Like that's the right. whole idea. So like, oh, this is a restaurant I've never heard of, but now we're going to go there all the time and yeah. whatever. Yeah. And in the Bay exactly. Area, two fifty for a taco. That's a screaming deal. It is a hell. Of, it's a great deal for even here. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Like, I assume everything in San Francisco is like eight bucks. So just mm -hmm. buy a taco. Don't be such a puss. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. Don't be such a puss. <sighs> buy a taco. Don't be a puss. Yep. That's today's title, probably. 
Uh, all right. Here's a funny one. Okay. <laughs> a Chinese vlogger. You know, they do the video blogging. Yes, I'm sure. Does that, is vlogging even a term that people still use? I don't think so. I think it's way yeah. less in use than, than this article assumes. Uh, but according to the BBC. Using the hip kids lingo vlogger, <laughs> which is a combination of video and blogger. Imagine saying things you'd say in a blog. That's right. But in video format. I learned about that in a chat room. That's a... <laughs> That's a space, a virtual a one. Chatting, a chatting room. Where people where come people. together and speak in a chat room. <laughs> uh, anyway, Chinese vlogger used a filter to look younger, was caught in a live stream glitch. This is pretty funny. Fans of a popular Chinese video blogger uh, calling herself Your Highness Kuo Bilu uh, have okay. been left stunned. After a technical glitch during one of her live streams revealed her to be a middle-aged woman and not the young, glamorous girl they thought she'd be. It's a little like the Wizard of Oz, kind of. Don't look behind the curtain. Right, exactly. <laughs> Pay no attention to the old voice coming from my young face. Yep. Uh, the, the revelations led to discussions about standards of beauty across the country's social media platforms. The blogger who initially uh, boasted... Well, she a blogger or a vlogger? Our article? Get this straight. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway, <clears throat> she boasted a, a follower count of more than 100,000 on Doyu, which is a thing, I guess, mm -hmm. is believed to have used a filter on her face during her appearances and have been renowned for her sweet and healing voice. Hmm. China's Global Times said that she had been worshipped as a cute goddess. I Oh, I hate that. It's like... It's like the same thing happened to Melisandre <laughs> when her when her, uh, her little neck filter thing started stopped working. <laughs> her neck filter, I love it. Her little neck filter. Uh, um, I'm woman. looking at this photo. Yeah, I think she, uh, I think people are stupid. I think people are stupid. That's what I think. She looks obviously fil filtered to me, doesn't she? To you? Well, she does, and I know that they can do some things with, like, softening features, but, I mean, this filter apparently gives her long hair, mm -hmm. which doesn't completely cover her headphone cords. It's, it's, I'm almost wanting to say, meh, this might be BS. <laughs> I mean, it could be. So what, she, what we're seeing there, that image, looks like the yeah. Snapchat filter that does this exact thing. Uh, Does it? Okay. I, I don't know if that's what she's using, but, yeah. but uh, there's a Snapchat filter that can turn men into women and, and women into men in, in real time. You can just sort of hover it. My experience with the app, though, is that hair stuff tends to look weird and move funny. Yeah. And then it's like painfully obvious almost immediately when you do it. Um, and so my first thought was, uh, this doesn't sound right. But then I thought, eh. BBC usually does their homework. They're not. Yeah, and you know, this isn't like. Yeah, exactly. This isn't a. Uh, you know, bizarre, unheard of website news source. I mean, this is the BBC. Yep. Yep. Uh, uh, just would like to see video of it maybe flickering. Oh, here we go. Okay, here we go. Video? Users on both Bluey YouTube have captured the footage. All right. Okay. I'd like to. This is this. Wait, we might get is, this, Scott. Where is this? Oh, here it is. So is that? It's not, it's not supposed to be her. That's someone she's chatting with, right? Yeah, I think so. Because they're talking back and forth to each other. But she. Um. Oh wait, her hair is being weird. But I don't see. Like there should be like her filter. Turning on and off, right? If it's if it's going if it's yeah, flickering out. And she's just on like solid. Oh wait, here we go. Oh, that's yeah, her sitting back. I'm scrubbing through the entire video. This is, uh, it's funny. It says that it captured the entire thing. It captured just when the filter stopped working, but not the moment that, like the, the before and after. Oh, so this lady on the right is not supposed to be her. That's someone she's just talking to. Oh, really? Yeah. No, I think the lady on the right is the, yeah, because this, uh, the Kotaku article says the same thing, and it's showing the same, um, woman. But so, it's showing a different photo on the left. 
So the young girl on the other side is supposed to be her? No, I think that's just who she's. She's interviewing her. Okay. Um, Dice Tomato, did you? Are you posting something that is helpful? <laughs> are you being helpful, chat think, room? I don't think you're posting something helpful. He's posting like deep fakes and stuff, which, which is not which helpful. is great. It's not helpful. Not helpful. No. Yes. Okay. Well, um, I don't know when this happens. They don't give us a timestamp. It's five minutes. Give us a timestamp. Right. Yeah, the Kotaku article um, that somebody posted, uh, J.C. Calhoun, I think shows the actual filter that she's using. Here, I'll put it in your, in your, um, or in our deal. Okay, um, put it in our deal. I'll put it in our deal, our Discord deal. Yeah, there it is, right there. And I think that that left and right is probably the filtered face. Oh. So that whole conversation, that so what the deal was is that's normally what she looks like, but in the conversation she had with this other chick, yeah, her her filter had already gone out. It had gone we out and her. had been out that whole time, and everyone's like, exactly. oh my gosh, she's like 50-something. Exactly. Yep, uh, we weren't seeing the... These are the times uh, we, we never live saw in. the with filter video. Brian, these are the times we live in. I know. Is it, is it can it really be that hard to find video of what you know of her with the filter on talking i mean it's it's on youtube right yeah but the fact that it's a thing at all and, yeah. and i'm signal boosting it by putting it in the news i don't know let's just all go home i don't know what to do all right hey check this out final story here for now this is a little sure. sad but also i don't know maybe there's some closure here a okay. grocery store employee who was missing for 10 years 10 years missing Mm. was found behind the self-same grocery store's uh, cooler. Oh, no. Yeah. The remains of the person. He's not not alive. Okay, so not alive. Yeah. Workers removing shelves and coolers from a former... Cryogenically (laughs) frozen behind the dryer's ice cream. Yeah, there you go. So they need to thaw him out. Uh, Let's see. Former No Frills Mark Supermarket in Iowa. They were tearing it down. Uh, It used to be a functioning supermarket. Uh, in January, they discovered the remains of a former employee who had been reported missing November 28th, 2009. The remains were identified as those of Larry El- Eri Malulo Makonda, I think is how you say it, according to CNN. Sure. Investigators used his parents' DNA to confirm the identity, and the clothes matched uh, the description of his attire at the time he was reported missing. Uh, let's see. The parents told officers at the time he was acting irrationally, probably because of medication he was taking. CNN reports the investigators believe that he went uh, to the store and climbed on top of the coolers. The space was used for storage of merchandise. Um, the uh, see, and employees would sometimes go there to hide when they wanted to take an unofficial break. Really? Mm. Did you ever have a job like that where you had a hiding place? Did you ever do that? <laughs> no. No, I mean, you know, at Taco Bell, I think I'd go to the bathroom and hang out in there for 10 minutes if I needed to just get away for a while. But... Yeah. But for almost 10 years, people were like, opening the cooler and buying things off the cooler shelves and not knowing that there was a corpse back there. Right, exactly. Well, it's not like um, there was any opening to, to let <laughs> his decomposing body get through to the food inside the cooler, but still. Still, clearly. A... Yeah, how did it not smell? How did it not... Uh... I don't get it. Yeah. It says people think that, or police think that he fell uh, into the 18-inch gap between the back of the cooler and the wall and then became trapped. Noise from the cooler compressors uh, probably concealed any attempts he call- they would have had to call for help. Uh, the autopsy found no signs of trauma, and the case has been deemed an accidental death. Hmm. I just thought that was gnarly, man. Can you imagine Jeez. just falling down a thing, and then 10 yeah, years, being nobody stuck knows where you and went. People can't hear you, like, saying, get me out of here, help oh, me. That's awful. Oh, yeah. that's awful. Hmm. Wouldn't have liked it. Uh, I'm going to save this Iggy Azalea article for tomorrow. <laughs> Ooh, people, yeah. you're going to have to tune in Thursday if you want to hear about what Iggy Azalea is up to. Yep, she's back in the news, everyone. She's fancy, from she what I hear. is fancy. All right, we're going to take a break. When we come back, Tom will be here with Tom's Tech Time and uh, then Recommendals with Nicole. That'll all be fun. Uh, before that, though, a song, and uh, you'll have to describe it because I don't know what it is. 
I will describe it, Scott. Uh, we're going to travel to Los Angeles, California for an indie act called Ships Have Sailed. It's really the brainchild of a guy named Will Carpenter, who's the vocalist and guitarist. Um, but the band materialized in the waning days of his previous project, a band which, uh, in which he played an integral role ever since moving to Los Angeles. He just decided, all right, I'm going to kind of break off and do my own thing for a little while. Their debut EP came out in 2013. That was called Someday. And then they followed it up with a full-length album in 2015 called Mood Swings. This is uh, uh, part of their latest series of singles. Um, it is a, an acoustic version of a single that they released before. The song is called Stay. This is the stripped-down version by Ships Have Sailed. And we'll be right back. I don't want to be accused of poaching. I think the police should be able to handle you at this point. Have fun. That's for schoolgirls. Now here's a route with some chest hair. The Morning Stream. My bum hole hurts. All right, we're back, everybody. Welcome back to the program. Time for us to uh, make Tom be a part of this, even though he, he may not, I, I assume he wants to be, but we're forcing him no matter what. He's coming in. Yeah, exactly. We. It's not like, who cares if he wants to be or not? He's yeah, I want to be. Oh, he wants to be. Ah, oh, that's great news, everybody. Here's his theme. With the computer, as with any tool, the concept and direction must come from the man. That man. If you want to be my tech, ti- <laughs> tech time. <laughs> You got to get with my Tom. Hey, oh, uh, it's a reference to Amazon series The Boys. That's true. I got oh, oh, I got to dig into oh. that. I, gotta, I still haven't started it. I want to watch it so bad. By the way, when I just yelled that out of nowhere, I leaned down the hall and went, "What?" Oh, great. <laughs> as all as all good companions she in our lives. You used to be sitting do. in this room talking to myself, uh, but but that was that much that, more out of context. I was going to say that that abrupt a uh, yeah. <laughs> That's pretty good. That's, Hey, uh, you're on, Con- Tom is fresh off the heels of uh, Hobbs and Shaw. I, we need to at least get like a, I know you can't, there's like a, a clamp down, right? Or is it open No, no, down? no. The, uh, the, as far as I can tell, the, the NDA lifted Wednesday. Okay. So today being oh, Wednesday, good. I think I'm free to talk about it. So can you, I mean, it's, it's part, it's a spinoff or, you know, whatever, part of the Fast and the Furious franchise. Yeah, it's, it's technically called <laughs> Fast and Furious Presents Hobbs and Shaw. Mm. And so you got Jason Statham, The Rock. Uh, mm-hmm. As Hobbs and Shaw, I don't know. If, I don't know which one's which. Uh, doing well, stuff. Dwayne Johnson is Hobbs. Okay. Jason Statham is Shaw. There you go. I'm, I'm, Spoiler. I'm not, I'm not an aficionado <laughs> of this series. I wish Spoiler: I was. If you haven't seen the first <coughs> nine or eight movies, this, this one's got everybody. Can't see nine yet. Everyone's it's favorite got, guy uh, in it. Idris Elba's in it. Uh, Princess yeah. Margaret from The Crown. Yeah. Right. Right. In it. Oh, I do like yeah. her. She's great. Yeah, I do too. Uh, so, Tom, <clears throat> give us your. Usually, have a little scale for rating films. How do you? How do you like Hobbs and Shaw? Uh, yeah, it's great. Yeah, uh, it's it's exactly what I expected. When I saw the trailer for this, I immediately was like, "Oh, this just looks like fun." Yeah. Uh, a bunch of of quips and fight scenes and and spectacular crashes, uh, chase scenes. Honestly, car chases are not my thing. That's why I've never been that into the Fast and Furious uh, thing. But there's so much more action. Mm -hmm. Uh, If you want an action movie that is full of action and follows its action with action, Hobbs and Shaw is your movie. Does this thing go like Uh, sci-fi directions or anything? I can't tell from the trailers. A little bit. Mm. uh, But more in the Bond direction of sci-fi than than say the uh you know the the the, the superhero direction of sci-fi it, it's kind of angles between those but it's a little more bond than marvel okay oh interesting all right i don't cool. know brian you want to run it or rush out and watch it now now that you've heard all this it's it's on my list to see but it's after things like uh the lion king congratulations tom yeah. uh <laughs> Uh, <laughs> yeah, many times. Yeah. Oh, Rick you don't need to. You listen. You're in first place. No need to pad the <laughs> popcorn buckets with the. You know, well, I gotta help. I gotta hold off. It chapter two. That's 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 what I have to do in the movie. That's now. true, and that's that is breathing down all of our necks. It's got um, great buzz. Yep. Glenn Tricker. Um, but I also want to see the new Tarantino thing. Want to see um, that one's great. I enjoyed yeah. that one quite a bit. Yeah. Saw that this last weekend. Yeah. Yep. And uh, Tom C gets to see everything early now. That's his deal. Yes. Well, I, I, once upon a time in Hollywood, I did not see early. Uh, oh. But yeah, Hobbs and Shaw, yeah, I got to tail in with my 
on my wife's coattails. That's right. Uh, my wife works for Rotten Tomatoes. I don't know if I mentioned that. No, never heard it before. First time. <laughs> well, people so, might be just joining us. And a they little didn't startup. Yeah, yeah, exactly. A little startup on the internet. Well, it kind of is yeah. in a weird way. <laughs> Um, uh, well, all right. That's great. I'll probably see Hobbs and Shot. Sounds like a fun time. Sounds like a good date movie to Kim. Oh, yeah. yeah. No, it's 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 a blast. And there's also a, a, a couple of cool cameos uh, in there. Yeah. Won't, won't spoil them for you, but, you know, you'll you'll have some fun. Vin Diesel show up at all? No Vin Diesel? I probably shouldn't say that because maybe he is. I can't. Okay, all right. I just said I won't spoil them for you, and you start asking me. All right, all right, all right. Trying to get me somebody, to make a tell. Somebody die? Somebody die in this movie? Uh, My, Michael <laughs> Dorn. I mean, a lot of people die uh, in this movie. It's an action movie. Michael uh, Dorn I, shows up as Worf briefly. That's just for a minute. As Worf? Yeah. Okay. All right. of that. All that is true. All right. I'm into it. That sounds awesome. All right. Thanos, uh, Thanos appears at the end. Yeah, Thanos is always there, <laughs> snapping his fingers. What an a-hole. Yeah, the Fast and Furious extended cinematic universe. <laughs> Fast and the Furious, end game. All right, hey, there uh, are, you should stay. Uh, you should stay if you like, uh, you know, little little bonusy, clippy type things. Stay through the credits. That's a, that's another thing. Do you know. buy into this idea that Fast and the Furious has just become superheroes with cars? Yes. Okay. I All mean, right. not 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 a hundred percent, but it's it's much much closer than that than than the original the fast and the furious movie right. was and i'm not talking about the 40s era one i'm talking no. about <laughs> and the and the by the way the second movie which we saw for film sack is garbage it's a terrible yeah. terrible movie i can't yeah. believe they made up for that after that like now it's like one of the biggest franchises of all time it's crazy to me even faster more furious what was that one called uh, too fast too furious <laughs> too fast too furious yeah. pretty darn fast and a little bit more furious slightly furious yeah it was weird. Yeah, did you have uh, Fast and Furious uh, 6, 5? No, uh, Fast 5 was fast. The, the one that they just called Fast and Furious again is in theaters right now. Oh, it is? Oh. Like a Fathom Events thing. Oh. You can't you, you can't buy it. Yeah. Oh, yeah. crazy. Really? That's nuts. Well, that's just to what? Get excitement for Hobbs and Shaw? Is that the idea there? Probably. I guess. But why that one? I don't know. That's don't, odd. Because yeah. that's not even the recent, the most recent one, right? No, it's 2009. That's weird. I guess it's a 10-year anniversary of it. Yeah, that is weird. Uh, Jake C. Calhoun in the chat says, Tokyo Drift is the best movie ever made. I don't know about mm -hmm. that, but it is the, I, it's my favorite Fast and the Furious. That's the third one. Uh, it was Until total... they make Mad Max Fast and Furiosa. Oh, my Lord. <laughs> well, George Miller did say the other day that those two sequels are coming, yeah, whether we want them or not. coming. So, pretty excited. Uh, all right, Tom. Border Town Drift. Le <laughs> Sorry, we don't have any time for tech news. Uh, thanks for <laughs> Yeah, well, uh, do, you, do you want me to talk about the Capital One thing at all? Do you care? Um, it was a huge breach. Everyone lost info. What's in your wallet? Nothing now because people stole it. <laughs> yeah, well, that's not quite Jennifer that bad. Jennifer Garner now has all of our social security numbers. Yeah. 100 million credit card applications, uh, some of which included social security and bank account numbers, were accessed. It was accessed by a single hacker uh, and a person has been arrested on suspicion of, of that hack. They have not, uh, you know, been had a had a trial or anything, but uh, they, they seem to think that that's the person who did it. Uh, and if that's true, it doesn't seem like the information went past her. Uh, so that would be good. Uh, in, in other words, no harm done. Capital One still providing, uh, you know, identity theft uh, protection, fraud protection uh, to anybody accessed. And if you were affected you should get an email if you didn't get an email you probably weren't affected i don't think i have a capital one anything so i think i'm good um well it I would be have if you one applied card. for a capital one too not just whether you actually got oh really oh yeah. okay because it was the application database that had been accessed when, yeah. going back to 2005. when you say a uh, single hacker you don't mean their marital status you mean like they were just them it was only them oh, that's a good question yeah. I, yeah i have no idea if she's uh, married or in a committed <laughs> relationship <or anything. laughs> did she swipe right or left mm, um, no, no clue no clue but okay that's interesting the the the, I, the funny thing about that is it capital one has to go the full the full monty here to take care of it yeah. Even though the, it could have just been, oh my gosh, I got through, and that's as far as the hack went, and no one's got the info. I mean, I don't know. We don't know. Well, they have to assume. I mean, they they you just got to assume that, that she got was... caught because she went on the internet and bragged a little <laughs> about the fact that she got the stuff and was gonna was gonna release it. Uh, so yeah, I mean, here's the thing. Uh, Capital One says. 
that there was a vulnerability in their internal web portal yeah. uh, that she took advantage of to access data that was otherwise properly secured on Amazon Web Services. Amazon Web Services says there was no there was no problem on our end. Right. This was not one of those examples of an AWS instance that was left open by mistake. They're like, everything was good on our end. It's a problem with Capital One's internal web portal uh, oh. that she took advantage of. Now, we don't know any more details about that. It could be that uh, she fished it somehow it could be that 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 she exploited you know some token internally on their intranet but it it was a capital one issue so that tells me that capital one deserves more than just a slap on the wrist here that that is something that they should have found now shannon morris on daily tech news show yesterday suggested that if capital one had a bug bounty program perhaps uh the person who uh, hacked into this would have taken advantage of that to get the bug bounty instead of going and almost releasing it on the internet for everyone. Mm -hmm. So, uh, you know, there, there may be some liability. In fact, there's a class action lawsuit already about ca against Capital One. Uh, the attorneys general of, I believe, New York and Maryland uh, are investigating uh, whether they want to bring charges of negligence against Capital One for this. So it's, it's pretty serious, even though the information doesn't seem to have been released. Yeah. Oh, man. I always hate these things because they just make everybody look dumb. But uh, having Shannon on was a great pull. She's she's so good at this stuff and knows, yeah, her, yeah. knows her stuff. You guys, we're lucky to have her. Today you'll be, uh, you'll have the misfortune of having me on. <laughs> no, it'll be even better. We got <laughs> Apple earnings to talk about. Oh, good. Got Let's do that. Spotify, How the, is it Samsung's got a new tablet. I heard uh, some something flown around yesterday that Apple's earnings show that services are so much higher these days that only that Apple or that iPhone is only making up less than half of total revenue now, uh, or something uh, like that. Is I would that have right? edited that sentence, but oh. it's mostly true. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, for the first time in seven years, iPhone made up less than half of Apple's revenue. Uh, Apple reported revenue of fifty three point eight billion dollars, and uh, iPhone revenue was twenty six billion dollars, uh, and the rest of the revenue came from services, which is 11.45 billion. And then Mac, iPad, and wearables each made up about 5 billion each. Yeah, see, that's awesome. And people look at that, or I, there's gonna be a tendency for people to look at that and go, oh, iPhone sales are down. That's actually kind of the opposite. It's like, no, all their other stuff is beefed up and that's good. Well, iPhone sales are down. <laughs> well, they're down, <laughs> but they're not like true. down, down. They're not like, oh, less than half. Let, a year ago, they were 100% of their sales. Like iPhone revenues fell 12% from last year. Uh, right. That is less than the 17% they fell year over year last quarter. Right. So, uh, but Apple knew this. Uh, Apple's like, yeah, I, phone sales are going to start slowing down now because people don't need to replace their phone every year. We know that. Uh, and we believe that services is where we're going to make up our revenue. So, so this earnings report is just right on track. I don't think it's crazy good. I don't think it's crazy bad. It's just Apple uh, on target saying, yep, we're growing our services revenue to make up the gap uh, as iPhone sales slow, the way that Mac sales have slowed and iPad sales have slowed. Uh, they're trying to make some hay out of, out of wearables, uh, saying that AirPods and headphones and, and watches are selling like crazy, but they're not giving a lot of numbers of, about that. So I'm a little less uh, enthusiastic about that side. Like maybe that will help make up the difference. Maybe it won't. Uh, but the services seems real, especially when they have a ton of services still yet to launch. We've got Apple Card coming in August, got Apple TV Plus and Apple Arcade launching later in the autumn. Uh, so, you know, it does look like services is on the trajectory to kind of ease the gap as iPhone sales slow and iPhone sales are expected to slow. That's yeah. that's not, it's not bad news. It's expected news. Yeah. And, uh, uh, you know, successful when services are successful, that grows platform anyway. So if you have a, a very, let's say arcade goes crazy, that, that may mean, you know, a bump in iOS sales for the next year. I mean, who knows, but uh, it seems like the right focus for them. Uh, that and so much more will be on the plate today the generous uh, Thanksgiving-style plate of tech news that will be the Daily Tech News <laughs> Show. bountiful Corn cornucopia. Cornucopia, right. exactly. Yep, yep. <laughs> that'll happen. Did you get uh, a quick question? When you guys were growing up, did you... Uh, have a cornucopia on the on the table no. for Thanksgiving. We never did. No, either. one of those cool little uh, horns, o plenty. No. no, we just had a we had a turkey. We had mashed potatoes. We had stuffing. It was a lot we of had, work. Um, to stuff we had those, little uh, <laughs> uh, construction paper pilgrims. Oh, nice. right. I yeah. like that. Yeah. My grandma had one, but it was fake food in it. 
it wasn't oh, yeah. real. Yeah, so, so like, like the plastic stuff. Yeah. Was the pl was it permanently in there? So like basically she just dusted it off and brought it out, or yes. did she have to load it with fake? No, fruit every it was time? like why it was all wired in there, <laughs> like wired yeah. plastic fruit. Yeah, it was bad. Yeah. Seventies man, what a time. Mm -hmm. Uh, anyway, that's today two thirty. Tom Merritt, anything else before we go? Uh, yeah, it's a thing. Uh, is a thing. And if you haven't subscribed yet, you need to. Uh, Molly Wood and myself break down the trends, and we have we are on fire lately uh months ago uh, i think it was probably like six months ago we called lil nas x who just broke the record for most weeks at number one i think we called we called lil nas x a thing before he ever hit number one mm. so i don't know you want to appear like you know what's up in the world <laughs> uh maybe check out it's a thing at it's a thing dot me Old Town Road. Tom's going to ride his horse to the old to hotel room. And I got my horses in the back. Horses in the back. I still have not heard that song in its entirety. I've only heard the clips that are used in memes. <laughs> <laughs> and you know what? Lil Nas X is fine with that. He's, He's fine, fine with that. Right? He doesn't yeah. care. Yeah. You know what? I think I'm, now that you say that, Brian, I don't think I've heard the whole song either. It's all, yeah. tick, it's all TikToks and brief clips and stuff. Right. TikToks and memes. and Yes, exactly. That's hilarious. All right. Maybe I'll w listen to the whole thing, then listen to It's a Thing, and then be glad I did. Tom Merritt, everybody. Ace Detect on Twitter. Have a fantastic day, and we'll see you at 2, well, 2.30. Two. Thanks, Al. Bye. Not 2.32. See you, Tom. 2.32. 2.27. In 18 seconds. There you go. Good time to get in. All right. Nicole time. Nicole time. We haven't had Nicole for a couple of weeks. I'm glad uh, it'll be good to hear. Her. I don't know if we ever today. I haven't heard. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I hope we do. I hope so. Um, I talked to her last night about unrelated things. So I know she's around, but okay. uh, she's currently showing offline, okay. which is concerning. Mm -hmm. I'm going to pause and save. Mm -hmm. Perfect time to save. Okay. Let's just save right there. After a couple of weeks of not being on the show, she could easily be forgiven for uh, forgetting that she does this on Wednesdays. Yeah, <laughs> she does this at all on Wednesdays. All right, I'm going to text her. Um, see if she's I heard something good. about her and Mark uh, taking uh, a male and female grasshopper with them to their latest uh, trip out to a convention. I wonder how that went. Yeah, I haven't heard any, any follow-up on that. It'd be great to know, you know? <laughs> they took a, a a grasshopper encased in uh, amber from a tree that they cut down to build a uh, workbench. <laughs> That's a pretty good plot for a movie. We should make that yeah, movie. we should use that. Yep. Transporting a Barbasol can or something. Sadly, I know a couple of people who legitimately believe that this is a retribution to the sinful nature of Vegas well. from a higher power. And uh, to those people, I would say you don't understand anything <laughs> yeah also uh, you know something that would actually uh compensate for the sin that happens in vegas it, it, it couldn't be a plague of <laughs> no unless i'm <laughs> unless i'm grasshoppers unless it's 10 feet thick of of <laughs> right. of these things sorry giant it's not grasshoppers enough. maybe might might uh, equate to uh yeah. compensating for the sin that's going on in it turns city. out it's kind of horse shit yeah. uh, well she's no oh wait I'm getting a thing she says yep uh, we no see you on discord she says yep but okay uh, <laughs> yep yep is not an answer no it's not an answer oh no she says crap sorry <laughs> and now she says hold on we got three dots okay. All right, the three dots. I love the three dots. The three dots like, are great, except you can make an animated GIF of that and fool people really bad. Right, right. Because then My, you can text What I don't that. like is when you see the three dots and then they disappear and nothing comes up. Oh, I hate that. That means like they started yeah. and then they stopped. And you don't know what they're thinking. Yeah, are they going to exactly. answer me? I they might have just that. gotten distracted by something, you know, like. Yeah, texting etiquette, man. It's rough. <laughs> All right, she's yeah. still three dotting. <laughs> if it disappears, three I'm going to be annoyed. Oh, I got logged out, she says. Okay. Well, I don't know why that would be. Okay. Well, Misu or disuse over the last two weeks. I guess so. Uh, hold on. It fell into disuse. Let's see. Restart. Uh, maybe it needed... Do, 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 do. 
All right. Yeah, if she's barely logging. They did have a big update this week, so probably... Oh, I think I see her. Yeah, I do see her. Let's see if this works this time. Is it working? Is it working? Is it working? It's ringing. Nicole? Me no hear you. Not yet. She's on the call. <laughs> okay. But no hear her. Uh... I assume you can hear me. Is uh, no. I don't see her uh, ring lighting up when she talks, so I'm guessing her microphone is not connected. <laughs> she says in her text, Mark jacked with my computer. <laughs> so Poor Mark, man. Always getting the blame. Yep. Always doing it. Do I have a thing where she yells, yells Mark? I don't think I do. Uh, we need one of those. Skid marks. No, that has Mark in it. <laughs> <laughs> That's not it. I thought I heard her. I thought I heard her for a second snorting. No. No, that was in that Let's clip. Oh. That was part of that clip. Here's Mateo uh. laughing. <laughs> when he was little. I mean, he's still little. That's but so cute. That's pretty cute. <laughs> <laughs> he's funny. Can you hear me? Yes. Oh, now we can! Yay! Uh, Yay. I'm just using my built-in mic. Oh. Uh, okay. Mark, like, unplugged my computer because we were going out of town for, like, three days. Yeah. And everything is a mess. Hey, when you were in Mark. Vegas, did you see all the bugs while you were there or no? Did you miss no, that? No, they, they weren't there. Oh, they yeah. came, they came after, after you left, around. yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh, interesting. Which mm -hmm. makes you guys a person of interest or yeah. people of interest. Yeah. <laughs> I think that's kind of interesting. You just happen to be there and then they're not there and then suddenly they're there. Exactly. Hmm. Coincidence? I think not. Yeah. Uh, Nicole's on the phone, but I want to play this real quick. How cute. How cute. Do you remember when he laughed like that? It's amazing. I do. He still, on occasion, will pull that out, too. Oh, like, that's cute. It, and it wasn't anything like he was... I trained him to do. That was just his natural laugh at the time. Well, he is a... That kid's a riot. Uh, oh, I don't know why I still gosh. have those files, but there they are. Uh, I love it. All right. Because they're super cute. That's why. That's why. Yep. That's exactly why. Hey, uh, it's good to have you here. We haven't had you for a while. You've been busy tra traveling, doing stuff, and uh, now you're back, and we're going to do recommendals Yay. with you. We talk about stuff that's streaming that we like, that we're watching, and uh, we have a tradition. That tradition is Brian Ibbett starts. So, Brian, do you want to set this up at all? This will have this will require no setup because I feel like I've already set it up over the past three days. All right. Here you go. I'm going to play it. What's Sporty Spice up to? Who? Sporty f***ing Spice, what's she up to? I don't know. Exactly. How about Posh? You know what she's doing? I don't understand. Making clothes for anorexics, right? Not exactly a growth market. And Baby, you know what she's doing? F*** all. Not even page six of the Daily Mail. And Scary Spice, up to her eyeballs in lawsuits and sex tapes. Ginger, on the other hand, has released three albums. Passion, Schizophonic, and Scream If You Want to Go Faster. They'll all make your ears bleed. You see, when they're apart, they're absolute fucking rubbish. <laughs> oh, 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 oh. Oops, left one in. Dang it. Together. <laughs> now they got their fucking spice girls. I love that you missed one. <laughs> I thought I went through that thing with a fine tooth filter and yeah. I got them all. Oh, that's hilarious. Uh, that was, uh, is that McCoy talking? McCoy? That's uh, Carl that is, Urban? That is Carl Urban talking, yeah, with his uh, thick accent. Wow. Um, that is The Boys on Amazon Prime right now. Brand new series based on the Garth Ennis uh, comic book series. I am uh, six of eight episodes, so uh, three-fourths of the way through and enjoying it tremendously. I'm pretty sure they're going to stick the landing by the the great reviews that it's getting um really really enjoying it. it is a it is a dark but oh let me let me really quickly clarify um the only thing that he is accurate on um in that spice girls description is that uh ginger spice has released three albums he got the names right and the fact that they will make your ears bleed but all of the other spice girls have been releasing solo albums except for posh so you know all the rest of that may be uh, inaccurate i anyway. love Love, love, love that you figured out a way to come to their defense in this story. I think that's amazing. 
<laughs> of because I Brian, did. not only is Brian a giant Spice Girls fan, like unabashed, but he <laughs> he found the clip where they talked about Spice Girls, yes. and then and then clarified the record. I think that exactly. you are the truest, bluest fan I've ever met in my life. <laughs> I'll let the record state wow. that the only the, the only twenty five percent of that was accurate. Um, anyway, uh, this this is a it's a great series. It's about um, a dark, gritty world that have superheroes, but the superheroes are kind of dicks. Uh, some of them are real dicks, like yeah. real jerks. Yeah. Um, basically, you know, turns out when you've got all this power, you can kind of put on an air that you're a um, a good guy, but deep down you can be as depraved and um, and rotten as as uh, the rest of us as mm. the rest of us exactly mm. the um uh the cast is fantastic i mean you've got carl urban who you heard there you've got elizabeth shu um as the head of this corporation that kind of runs the the superhero team it's basically come on it's the jla you've got a you've got a superman archetype you've got a wonder woman archetype you've got a an aquaman and a flash archetype mm. um, a batman archetype it is absolutely the jla mm. and um and garth ennis uh, is known for this kind of dark twisted ideas right he, like this is his whole thing he is yeah, yeah, I mean, he's done the preacher and uh, or just preacher, not the preacher. Mm. <laughs> the did preacher. Either you, did either of you read uh, the comic books? No, I've read. I've read preacher. I've never read the boys. I meant to. I wanted to. I never did. So I picked. Yeah. I picked these up for Mark one year for Christmas, mm. and he could. He couldn't get through them. He said oh, it was really? so gratuitously like violent, and it was just like. He, he, the way he described it was like a 16 year old wrote a comic book mm -hmm. about the how superheroes could just be horrible yeah. and it was just he just said it was just too much for him but he understood that what the comic book was doing was setting it up for you to understand that these superheroes were not good people yeah i, I think part part mm -hmm. of it's a garth ennis thing to do uh mm -hmm. and i think his comic work is much meaner and um i don't know there's a there's a more raw kind of meanness to it than mm -hmm. the tv adaptations of both preacher and this from what i'm hearing mm -hmm. uh are are better than the source material because they don't they're not just they can't be just hard hard and mean all the time like it, no i mean but there is a there is a grittiness and there is a lot of uh violence and gore and uh mm -hmm. f-bomb usage uh some of which can be caught in that uh <laughs> in that clip we just played but um it is yeah i have i haven't read the the series either but now i'm curious about it um and, and especially about that description about this maybe being better than the Mm -hmm. um than the series it's based I on. think I think we still have the the books because I I think I got them like um what do they do when they put them all together a graphic <laughs> novel trade? oh the uh, trade, uh, trade, trade yeah. paperback trade. Yeah. so yeah. I have some I think I have some trades of the boys well, I might, like, and, yeah I might want to borrow uh, the first one of those. I Thanks. still I still have a an Avengers button that I got from Disneyland that I want to give you too Ooh, oh that's awesome yeah. lucky I know we haven't seen each other in like I know. months it's, it's been a I while. I question whether or not you actually still live in Colorado, actually. I have seen no proof of this. <laughs> yeah. He also did some great work on uh, Hellblazer, by the way, back in the day. But mm -hmm. he's known for, uh, you know, causing a little trouble. Likes to put up a little bit of a stink. Mm -hmm. yeah. he's, uh, yeah. he's a, he's a cranky, uh, cranky writer. He likes to go dark. But uh, I'm has, very interested in this, so I want to see. Has Steven talked about the boys he hasn't. Book? He probably would have brought it up uh, if he were on this week, but he wasn't able to be on Monday. But I'll bet he I bet he would have talked about it because this thing is doing so well and getting so much attention. Yeah. Um, yeah Simon Pegg. I forgot to mention Simon Pegg is in this. Um, the son of uh, Dennis Quaid and Meg Ryan. Jack Quaid is one of the main characters. Jack Quaid. Um, I didn't know. Jack he, Quaid. I didn't know there was a Jack Quaid. Quaid. And Anne Kuzak, the <laughs> sister of John Kuzak that's not uh, Joan, <laughs> is also in this as well. Yeah. Oh, here he is, Jack Quaid. He's 27 years old. All right. Mm -hmm. Born in 92. And he kind of looks like Dennis Quaid, honestly. Now I just want to watch Total Recall, okay? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Quaid. Quaid. Uh, all right. Well, that's awesome. I'm uh, very yes. interested in this, so just need to, to do it. I'm, I'm kind okay. of a fan of like, hey, what if superheroes sucked? Uh, genre yeah. and they're not the only one like uh irredeemable plays with this one right. of my favorite kick books ass. kick um, ass absolutely 
Um, Even uh, Watchmen. Yeah, yeah, Watchmen is. To, in fact, I would I'd argue that Watchmen is like the end all be all. Like that's the one that started this idea. I think so too. This has yeah. a very Watchmen feel to it. I feel like this, um, this did better than the Watchmen movie at conveying that. Obviously, not not as well as the Watchmen comic book. Sure. Dan Trachtenberg, by the way, we haven't mentioned. We mentioned on Monday, but um, uh, from TRS Live, is that what the show is called? It's just TRS, totally rad show. Just TRS, totally rad show. <coughs> yeah. uh, he was, uh, yeah, he's he's director of this and did cloverfield lane he did uh well he directed awesome... the directed the first episode but yes he was a uh, he's definitely in here uh yeah he's he's incredibly talented he's the one that's working supposedly he's the new director on um the uncharted movie they've been working on forever oh really oh yeah, that's cool which is exciting because that's got uh, tom holland in it. it's got your spider-man is gonna be yeah. uh, gonna be nathan drake in there it's great. That's he was great. Uh, originally supposed to do the Why the Last Man adaptation, and that got canceled. Ooh. A lot of movies get canceled. That's just yeah. how that works. But um, yeah. let's see. Uh, third, 2018 announced track will direct the first episode of the Amazon series The Boys, based on Garth Ennis' comic book. He replaces Seth Rogen and Evan Goldberg, who dropped out due to scheduling conflicts. Oh, interesting. So they so they did mm. Preacher, and they were they were going to be on this as well, but they did not direct this anyway. Interesting. Yeah, and he did that great. amazing portal um, short film, like basically did it kind of on his own, right? The the portal. Oh, it was incredible! Uh, portal No Escape yeah. is amazing. If you portal No Escape. That's if you is. haven't seen Portal No Escape, I mean it's been out for a while now. Let's see, 2011, but it, it it's the thing everybody went. Oh, Trachtenberg's going to be huge. He's got the chops. Yeah, he's exactly. really good. So every time I hear something new, and the best part is he bought Carter's. Uh, cards, not mine. Didn't want oh, mine. Really? <laughs> I bet last in that big Kickstarter, he yeah. did uh, Carter's cards. He backed Carter's cards and then told and then to sent me a PM and said, "Hey, by the way, I got Carter's cards. They're amazing." Didn't buy my cards. <laughs> Just kidding. Hers are better than everyone's. Anyway, uh, uh, that's awesome. I want to see it and I will watch it. So I'm very excited. Yes. Uh, okay. All Where right. are we now? Your turn. My turn. Let me play a thing. And let's see if you guys can figure it out. It's going to be obvious, I think. I tried to pull a clip that's hard to decipher, so mm -hmm. we'll see how it goes. Here you go. I want you to be with me. Forever? Forever and ever. Do you love me? Very, very much. Okay, any ideas? Wow. Um, <laughs> I don't recognize that. Uh, yeah, I don't know. Is you... it Romeo and Juliet or something like that? Nope, I'll give you a hint. That was the voice of Bruce Willis talking to... Oh, Pulp Fiction. Yeah, it's Pulp Fiction. Oh, gotcha. I kind of right. hinted this earlier with Brian, but, that I didn't, but I didn't make it sound like I watched it for... Yeah, it's for like this. I watch an ensemble movie that had John Travolta, <laughs> and I was thinking, oh, it's Pulp Fiction. Yeah. I wonder why... <laughs> yeah, I tried to avoid it because I didn't want to give it away, yeah. but... Uh... Nice. You eliminated it right before he said, Zed's dead, baby, Zed's dead. <laughs> Zed's dead. So I uh, I haven't seen it in a while, and that's not why I watched it, though. The reason I watched it is Tom and I, uh, for Current Geek this week, we did our film festival episode, and we just watched Taxi Driver for the first time for both of us. Mm -hmm. uh, for whatever reason, I just had never seen it. It was on my list of things I just I could never get around to, but finally watched Martin Scorsese's 1975 Taxi Driver and liked it a lot. Mm -hmm. And it got me in the mood for more of this of the similar ilk, you know. Yeah. And so I'm I'm just in Netflix after that thing ends, and I notice, oh, Pulp Fiction's still streaming. You know what? I'm in the mood. Let's go. Let's watch it. And I did. So I'm gonna recommend cool. it. Uh, Pulp Fiction is a weird thing for me. When I saw it for the first time when it came out in '94, I hated it. Um, really? I absolutely wow. hated it, and I think I know why I hated it. I hated it because I watched it when I had a newborn. Oh, and, sure. And I don't yeah. mean she was with us at the theater. I mean, there was something, <laughs> there was something just, and it woke her up. <laughs> <laughs> there's just something diametrically opposed. An, an, an infant newborn just does not match up with, Tarantino's uh, style, right. his tone, his stories, the, his dialogue. The budding promise of a new family. Yeah, it just goes uh, to counter to it. <laughs> it just right. it just goes counter to it. It's the same, and Jeannie points out it's probably the same reason I hated Seven. Seven, very specifically, I just had, I think Carter was just born, and Seven, you know, featured a really horrible thing that happened to a mm -hmm. pregnant woman, mm -hmm. and it pissed me off. So 
Yeah, like I feel like when I was at those little tender moments, <laughs> I would have, I would be, uh, you know, I kind of had a hard time with this stuff, and I hated this movie when it first came out. Um, and everyone was raving about it, and they were ah, but ah, but ah, and I'm like, whatever. Uh, I remember really liking Reservoir Dogs, but that was before I had kids, and I really felt like this, like that was probably it. I'm pretty sure that was it because I really enjoy it now, and I've seen it a few times mm -hmm. since and liked it then too. But I think Pulp sure. Fiction is 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 really good for what it's supposed to be. And mm -hmm. if you're in the mood for like gritty crime drama, stylized, you know, Tarantino or not, uh, it's great. Now, here's the thing. I had forgotten two things about this movie. One, they talk a lot about feet. A lot about feet. <laughs> yeah, right. Foot massage. Yeah. Um, what else? Like, what? I know there's the foot massage discussion. There's the whole discussion about foot massage, and then there's this long, drawn-out scene where Uma Thurman's what walking through her house. <laughs> She's walking through her house in bare feet. And it's just this long, arduous shot of her feet. And it's just now, now that we know what we know about Tarantino's feet thing. But do we really, do we really know? I think we know. I mean, or do we just, just suspect? Is, is it, it one of those rumor internet things? Like, I, I don't. There's actual I mean, court documents of the lady who accused him of uh, doing weird foot things in a hotel at some point or something. Or maybe it's not court stuff, but somebody out there's got like <laughs> some story about him and feet. But here's the thing. It's okay. No, he it's fine. Have, he can be as kinky yeah, about his feet as he wants to be. I'm not saying it's a problem. Yeah. I'm just saying it's it, once you see it, it's distracting because uh, yeah. every one of his movies, including Dust Till Dawn, he is drinking uh, tequila off the foot of somebody. Like He right? also, he also Hayek, has... Admittedly. Come on. I mean, <laughs> I would drink tequila off the foot of Salma Hayek. I, I don't know that I would. I, if you also notice, all of his movies always have a shot from a trunk. Oh, from a car? Yeah, movies. that's true. That's yeah. true. Yeah. I'm not getting defensive about the foot things. I'm I'm making sure that people that are listening that do have a foot thing don't feel <laughs> Oh, yeah, I'm not it. judging you. I'm just saying, uh, all I'm saying is Tarantino's kind of, it turns out if you just retroactively, retroactively watch all his old movies, you're like, oh, my gosh, there's feet everywhere. It's just everywhere. He's super into it. Anyway, whatever. It doesn't matter. Yeah. Uh, I'm going, I'm, I'm, uh, I'm, it was the other thing that bugged me. Oh, uh, Kathy Griffin has a bit part in this movie, and I'd right. forgotten about that. Yeah. So yeah, right she's at, in Eric Stoles' house, right? No, she, uh, she's oh. a street person when, um, street person has connotation, sorry. Uh, she's, <laughs> she's out on the street when Marcellus gets hit by Bruce Willis's car. And she comes over to say, right. uh, are you okay? I think he's dead. You know, the, the little crowd of people. She's in that crowd uh, before um, we have the meats comes back at him with the gun. <laughs> I, think, I think that guy took his wallet. Doesn't she say that her line? Yeah, I think that's I think it. Took, yeah. I think he took that guy's wallet. Yeah, I didn't like it. I didn't like it because it was kind of Seinfeld era, her, uh, right, which those right. episodes of Seinfeld she was on. So anyway... This it's fine. This was one of my favorite movies in college. I had the big yeah. poster on my wall. I, I, I love this movie. Yeah. And I still do. Yeah, it's great. It's um, I mean, for what and that five dollar milkshake would be probably ten now. Oh, totally. But for <laughs> for what that thing is supposed to be, it's exactly that. Like, it's his vision. It's his thought. It's 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 a ter It's the reason Tarantino. Is the giant directory is now Pulp Fiction is really the thing that settled, you know, that that's mm -hmm. cemented that. Um, and I just, I don't know, I just had a good time with it. Zed's uh, dead, baby. Zed's dead. Zed's dead. <laughs> uh, and it's and it's again, if you take it, if you take it, chat room's still going off about the feet. I'm not shaming the feet. <laughs> I'm not shaming the feet. You guys misunderstand. I don't care who he likes with what feet. It's fine. What I'm saying is, once you know it. It's and you look for it. It's like when you buy yeah. a new car and you notice how many people have your car. I can't not see it. Well, it's his. It's his personal trope, right? Right. right. So he's into it. Hey, how gnarly do you think his feet are, though? Just, just oh, geez. Yeah, I mean, you get, I do you think he's is he a sandal guy or do you think he's like really thick tube socks and uh, <laughs> non-breathing loafers? I think his. <laughs> I think he's got just gnarly ass feet with like crazy like cracked nails and just the shittiest feet. No, I bet you he has nice feet. I bet you he gets a pedicure almost daily. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you're maybe right. You're maybe right. Yeah. All right. Uh, let's uh, move on over to Nicole. Nicole, do you have a recommend, uh, recommendation? I do. So last week uh, I had my recommendal ready and then I couldn't get on, come on the show. So 
uh, here's my recommend tool. I'm going to put it in the, ch in the chat, Scott. Okay. I'm looking for it here. Okay. There it is. Oh, wrong one. Crap. That's oh. not the one. Oh. <laughs> I also love that movie. That's a great movie. I, that, that was my backup just in case. Right, but, nice. uh, just, just for the record, she put uh, Walt Disney's animation studios, the princess and the frog trailer. She just yeah. put in there. Ava, oh, yeah. Ava and I watched that yesterday. It's on oh. Netflix right now. Streaming. Nice. So there you go. All right, here we go. I'm going to play it. Let's see what okay. happens. I'm not looking at the title. I have no idea what this is. On the day the world ended, the fate of mankind was carried in a small metal box. Pulp Fiction. Here it is again, the moment when we pause to celebrate our fair city. Today's a big day. Something's not right. That this place is falling apart. Generators are our only source of power. If it goes, we all go. They can fix it, right? Maybe for now. The generator won't last. Okay. I heard Bill Murray's voice. Did I hear his that voice? Was Bill, you heard Bill hmm. Murray? Do you recognize the, the first guy? No. Um... <laughs> Oh, I'm looking. Oh, shoot, I saw the name. I don't know what this it's is, okay. though. I don't know what this is. I've never heard of this. Uh, so this is a movie called City of Ember. City of Ember. And it is based off of a book. Now, I'm going to tell you right now, uh, right up front, if you've read the book, you probably don't like the movie. <laughs> oh, really? Okay. There's a, this movie did not do well um, for some reason. I think it was great. But again... I didn't read the book. The way the book sets it up, you don't know that they're in an underground city at all. Like, I guess the book kind of hides that and skirts around it for a very long time. So there's a big reveal in the book. Mm -hmm. um, the movie, you can't really skirt around it. You got to get to the point. <laughs> like, What's mm -hmm. going on? Why are they in this city? What? What's happened? Uh, so you heard, um, who's Susan Sarandon's husband? Tim Robbins. That was Tim Robbins. Is that right? Oh, okay. Yeah. yeah. Shawshank right. Redemption guy, right? Yeah, that's the guy. Yeah. Andy <laughs> Dufresne. Yep. Andy Dufresne. <laughs> so he's in this movie. Um, his son is, he's come of age in the city of Ember. And when they come of age, they get assigned uh, jobs within the city. So you're following his son, which I can't remember his name, <laughs> it was so important. Uh, uh, Harry, Harry Treadway plays Dune Harrow. Is that him? Harry Tread Treadway? Yes, Dune. That's right. Dune is his name. Okay. Dune. Dune. Okay. And his friend, I always butcher her name. I don't, she oh, Cersei oh, Ronan. Cersei Ronan. She Ronan. did a whole song on Cersei. SNL on how to pronounce her name. I yes. still will not be able to pronounce her name. She's also come of age and she's getting, so you, you're following these two teenagers kind of navigating uh, their life in this underground city. And you're, you're pretty much the first scene tells you why they're down there. So, and there's a special box that is set to unlock after 200 years. I think it's 220 years in the book. Uh, and it gets lost in the city and Bill Murray plays the mayor and he's big belly and there's food shortages and the, the generator's going out and they're like, how do we get out? And then there's like really huge moths and moles. And you're like, why are these, why are these animals so big? So something drastic happened on the surface that pushed everybody down. The movie did not do well. So you never really got to see past them getting out of the city, but I still find that it was, I, I like the movie. Probably, um, probably set up for like a, a sequel or something. Yeah. Right? Yeah. They did set it up that. for a secret. Cause I'm like, okay, they got out. Mm -hmm. What happens now? Because <laughs> now <what? laughs> I've seen what the moths look like. They're ginormous. He directed the same director, directed monster house, which I love that movie. Oh, oh yeah. That was the first movie I bought on Blu-ray actually. Cause Tristan really liked it. Yeah, that's good. Uh, so I kind of want to see this. I didn't know this existed. It's it, yeah, City of Ember. Um, I also found a video on YouTube talking uh, about why the book. It's called Why the Book Was Better, and it's about City of Ember. And he kind of breaks down like the the 
differences between the book and the movie. And in the end, he's like, look, this was actually a pretty good adaptation. There were a few plot holes, but it was it was a pretty good um, pre- presentation adaptation, of the book. Adaptation. Yeah, 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 adaptation. Um, wow. Like, I, I don't think I've ever heard of somebody on the, on the internet who... Uh, was about to say that the book was better say actually it's still pretty the movie's still pretty good Did yeah they take away his, his youtube card for that or uh mm. no 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 i <laughs> i watched the whole video on it and he, he presents it really oh. well hmm. like he kind of he the way that he does his videos he kind of dogs a movie anyway sure. but then mm. in the end he's like look you know it's not that bad it's still entertaining and yeah, yeah. i love and it's the, a good family movie I, too i like cool world building sounds like this has some of that yeah. um mm-hmm. and i did you mention that it was produced by tom hanks by the way no i didn't know it was produced by tom hanks yeah oh yeah gary so. goatsman tom hanks steven Sh- something and seth hatchett so does so, it say anything about it having problems with release because it really did not do no good. it says it never i mean it's it had a 55 million dollar budget and it says it made a total worldwide gross of 17 million it never it never paid itself yeah. back yeah. Mixed reviews yeah. from critics, 53% Rotten Tomatoes. Um, visually arresting, boasts a superb cast, but is sadly lacking in both action and adventure. Yeah, it was. I thought it was fine. I yeah. thought it was fine. It's it's a fun movie. Seems like a seems like a good thing to 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 watch when you've got yeah. you know got some time. Where's it uh, streaming? I think I I watched it on Stars, so okay. it's part of part of the Stars thing. Part okay. of the Stars. Part of the Stars. stars. Thing. Well, uh, these are fine recommendals today. And Nicole does this cool thing where she groups them and tweets about them. So if you don't follow her on Nicole Spag on Twitter, then you're dumb. So... <laughs> no, you're not dumb. All right, you're it's not okay. dumb. Then you're want... doing it wrong. If doing you just wrong. want my recommendals, I have a Twitter account for recommendals. So, so you can follow that and get it. How do you spell um, it on there? How do you spell recommendals? R-E-C-C-O-M-M. Two uh, C's, two M's. You're, I'm thinking about it too hard. <laughs> Yeah. Recommentals. <laughs> recommentals. Yeah. Two two M's. Two oh, C's. two M's, two C's. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Uh, the the rec and the mentals. Got it. Mentals. Mentals. <laughs> uh, all right. Well, this is great. Go check that out. Uh, follow her on Nicole's bag as well. And uh, we'll do this again next Wednesday. It's good to have you back. Cool. Bye. Have a good one. Bye. Have a good week. All right, Brian. This brings us to the yes. end nearly. I do have an email I'd like to read, though. Yeah, I like this. <laughs> uh, Stephen Radke, I feel like he's been around the community for a while. I've heard that name lots of times. Yes, he, he uh, he's he's great in both the Pokemon Go community and the uh, Frog Pants community. Oh, nice. Also, Radke yeah. sounds like a, a Pokemon, doesn't it, a little bit? Radke? It does. Yeah. Totally does. What does a Radke evolve into? I, ca- I captured a Radke, and he uh, f- evolves into a really Radke. Uh, exactly, because it would be something better than Rad, like Rad. a, a s- Gnarly Key. Gnarly Key. <laughs> <laughs> I like it. Um, he says this, you dicks. That's how it starts. Oh, I'm taking back his evolution now. Yep, yep. You're back to just being a rad key. You dicks, he says, listening to Friday's TMS when y'all started talking about Steve Perry. And I said, a word, play songs from Steve Perry on my Amazon Prime music. Oh, Sherry came on first. Now it is destined <laughs> to be stuck in my head all day. Thanks. No, thanks. Love the show, says Steve Radke. And if, and if you all thought that you were immune, you should have been gone. Should have been gone. I hate that song, too. I hate it. It's my least favorite Steve Perry thing oh, ever. Made you feel I should have been gone. Should have been gone. Oh, shit. After all this. Oh, 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 it sucks. <laughs> uh, all right. Brian Coverville today? That's happening. There will be a Coverville today. The aforementioned Purple Rain tribute in honor of the 35th anniversary of the album. It actually came out 35 years ago last month, but been uh, busy with other episodes to get out. So this one kind of got pushed back. Covers of all nine songs as well as maybe a couple other bonus tracks. Of course, you got the time. Got to represent Morris Day and his band on this thing. Um, that'll be coming up at 1 p.m. Mountain Time at twitch.tv slash Coverville. Who is the drummer girl? The girl? Uh, Sheila E. Sheila E. Will you, will you have any Sheila E. hits? There will be no Sheila E. represented on the show. Because Darn I don't it. know if she was involved. Um, I think the Revolution drummer was somebody different. I don't think Sheila E. was drumming for that. But um, Prince did write The, Gra- the Glamorous Life. Uh, for Sheila E. So her biggest hit, the, the song that we all know 
Sheila E. Four was written and originally uh, demoed by Prince. And she um, did Love Bazaar. I love Bazaar. Yeah, more Wendy. Wendy and Lisa will probably be represented because they were in the movie mm-hmm. um, and they were part of uh, um, part of the revolution at the time. So let's see. I'm reading through this just to see if she does anything else. Oh, this is interesting. Yeah. In 2016, check this out. Mm-hmm. Sheila E. provided drums for Hans Zimmer and Junkie XL's orchestrated soundtrack for the blockbuster film Man of Steel and Batman vs. Superman Dawn of Justice. Really? So that's Sheila E. playing drums. I saw her live as part of Ringo Starr's all-star band several years back. It was John Waite, Sheila E., Paul Carrick, uh, who else was... Oh, uh, 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 Colin Hay from Men at Work. Mm -hmm. And what's cool is they they obviously do a bunch of Beatles covers and a bunch of Ringo Starr's solo songs, but then they all each do the songs that they're known for. So you've got Sheila E. doing The Glamorous Life, backed by John Waite from The Babies and Paul Carrick from Mike and the Mechanics and Squeeze and and Colin Hay from Men at Work. It was cool. Uh, Also, Junkie XL, of course creator of the soundtrack for Mad Max Fury Road so I just point that oh, out. Oh there's the connection there's the everybody take a drink yep. there's the Mad Max reference. That guy rocks he's so good. I've got a big old kitty hello big old kitty. <laughs> hello kitty you big old kitty you big old kitty. But I do and I see our cat because he's such a jerk I see him in the hall and I go oh hello kitty why are you so shitty. That's what I say <laughs> how come you so shitty Ooh, kitty. I got a slot I don't know if you saw that on no, camera. I but- missed it she did not like me picking her up and putting her in the perch. She swatted at me. She smells other kits, other cat in there. <laughs> <laughs> she does. Aggravating the cat with Brian Ibbett. Yes, you gonna, you gonna attack me, huh? <laughs> no, she's playful. Nice. Silly cat. It's a good cat. All right. Hey. Why are you so shitty? We gonna. <laughs> We're going to take our leave. Tomorrow we'll be here. We got uh, Thursday business, although Wendy's not here. As uh, you may remember, she's out of town tomorrow. So we will be mm. doing. She's in Chicago, I think she said. With some friends, so we're gonna do uh, open, do a open call phones. now or something. Yeah, we'll do yeah. open phones. Why not? It's always fun to hear you guys call in. Hey, maybe essential Ask us anything. Essential tremor can write in and and be hyperbolic. That'd be great. I'm looking forward to it. <laughs> Go and feed the trolls. I know. Um, all right, so that's it. frogpantscom TMS is uh, where you'll find links to everything we're doing here. You want to send us an email? The morning stream at gmail.com. You want to call us and leave us a voicemail? 801-471-0462. And you want to support us on Patreon? It's easy. Patreon.com slash TMS. New month starts tomorrow. It's your chance to hop on board and be a part of the the wacky adventures of August and get exactly. something cool in the mail and do some rad stuff. So yeah, thanks for your support. support. The, the support the stuff you love. You know, we do this out of the goodness of our heart, but we also do it out of the money from your wallet. So yeah. Yeah, uh, He's right. So it's a combination of those two things. Keep the lights on here. Uh, in in the in our respective studios. Oh yeah, and Gidget will be here. I forgot. We're gonna do a quiz. Of course. Yeah. Oh, I can't wait. Yeah, yep. I'm studying up. I'm gonna memorize every everything that Cynthia Rhodes ever appeared in. <laughs> so that'll happen, and it'll be great. Uh, that's it. We're done. Brian, song. Have song. Have song. Will travel. Um, so I, I, one more mention of Prince and Purple Rain uh, going out for today's cover. I didn't have anything for the 31st, so I'm like, you know what? I'm going to play something uh, that, that I listened to. So all the way back from Santa Fe to Denver, six-hour drive, for about four of those six hours, Tina and I listened to nothing but covers of the nine songs from Purple Rain because she was like, oh, you know, I'll help you pick out songs for the show. So that's exactly what we did. I made a... I made a playlist of all the covers I had of songs from that album. And we listened to it and figured out which songs we were going to use. This was one of the ones that we had picked for When Doves Cry. However, um, because I played it on a recent episode of Coverville, I'm not going to play it as part of the new episode of Coverville. It's something I try to avoid if I can. Um, This is One of the Boys. The band is called One of the Boys from the 2013 album Pinned Up. Here is their cover of when doves cry oh very nice we'll be back tomorrow thanks everybody for being here we'll see you then whoops we'll see you then this show is part of the frog pants network frog pants network get more shows like this at frogpants.com <laughs> that was you oh really did i do that yep. i was probably uh, acting like i was drinking or something that was a you sound i like